Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. Welcome, and thanks for joining us today uh, on this wonderful sunny day here in Detroit. Uh, I am Chris Short, uh, Technical Marketing Manager at Red Hat on the OpenShift team. I'm very happy to be joined by my co-worker and fellow Red Hatter, Christian Hernandez. Please introduce yourself, Christian. Yeah, well, almost the exact same introduction as you, except my name is Christian Hernandez. So, Chris Hernandez, Technical Marketing Manager at, uh, at Red Hat. We're actually on the same team, me and Chris. So Yeah, so we're on the same team. We have essentially the same job or same mission, right? Like help people help themselves. That's you know? right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like make, make people smarter yes, with... Right. Uh, you know, the existing tooling and things that we have, including this live stream. So here we are today That's gathered amongst all of our friends, uh, 34 of us so far. Uh, according to Amy, there's no sound. There is no sound? I don't know. I, I can hear you. I could hear it. So hang on. Let's see. So let's, let's, let's pull the audience. Can you hear us? Let, let's let's start this off with technical. No, I, I'm good. Like I've, I, the my monitor or external system says we're good. So Amy, check okay. your sound. Okay. Oh, yeah. so he says we can. There is sound. There is sound. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't mind starting with technical issues. I, I like. I like uh, yeah, it. like it, 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 it loosens up the feel. It, it does <laughs> make it seem very like normal. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I don't like technical issues. So yeah. Oh, she says she was muted. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. There she you go. That'll well, that'll do it. Do it. <laughs> that'll do it every time. Every time. Mute works every time. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> So yeah, so uh, how are you doing, man? You doing all right? Doing good, doing good. Um, you're you're in sunny Detroit. It's actually overcast here in Los Angeles, um, hmm. but uh, doing good. Um, awesome. It's been it's been kind of a crazy month for me. My my June calendar. Um, I, I I mentioned this before, but I'll I'll mention it on on I mentioned to you before, but I'll I'll mention yeah. it on, on Twitch that it um it looks like a like a Jackson Pollock painting. Right, oh. my my June. So it's like you know, like all the different colors just kind of look like splattered, Lovely. and so it's been it's been kind of um, a crazy June. So um, I'm looking forward to some PTO I'm taking in July. But very nice. But I'm uh, doing well. Good, doing good, well, good, good, good. So good. yeah, what are we talking about today? It is Christian Hernandez's very helpful helper note. That That's right. Whole, like this, this is you, dude. Like this is your this whole is show. Like I am, me, I am yes, here as yeah. color commentary, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so, so this is a long one. So when when you asked me to to do the Twitch on my helper note, I asked, I said I, I'm going to need a block of three hours um, mm -hmm. because I'm going to do everything from scratch. So I hope everyone is is like, settled in. You know, grab is, grab, grab like, something to drink. Right, I have my making water flour here. right now, doing the whole nine yards. Right, like we're yeah. we're going from you know from we're going from, from zero. Right. Farm so, to table, right? Yeah, like. we're farm to table. We're going from <laughs> from zero to a full open ship cluster, right? So, um, so I like to do. So I'm going to share my screen. So I, I like to do something. Do. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask your permission to do it because um, I, I heard that you don't like um, slideware. However, I think in this particular instance, you you all can do with five slides. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do I mean, five slides is five slides. Five slides. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Um, I, I, just the level set. Yeah. There is, um, how do I? Okay, I, I always middle button. Yeah, I, I always button. share the wrong thing. Let's see. Oh. Here. Um, well, let's see. What is Christian doing? Not three. on his normal thing. There we go. All right. Do you see the the slide? Yes, sir. So, so I always like to go. Um, uh, those of you seen my Twitch. Uh, Twitch before, and those that know me, I, I always like, like to do a, a brief history, a brief background, right, of why, right? I always do ask, ask the why, why, the why, why, yeah. why the helper note, and, and I like to uh, go back to OpenShift version three, where version uh, version three was very much Legos, right? So OpenShift version three um, was very much like giving users a bunch of Lego blocks, right? Um, and right. you can. Um, you know, with Lego blocks, you build whatever you want, right? But um, the the automation behind that is uh, very difficult, right? Like, how do you when, when you when you divorce um, the uh, the operating system from uh, what you're running on, which what what you're running on it, um, you know, trying to keep those two in sync were were really really hard. So, um, as yeah. all of you probably know, what I'm alluding to is the the meeting of chocolate and peanut butter 
of uh, CoreOS, Tecton, and uh, OpenShift, right? So, um, right. so that's what OpenShift Tectonic. Core is, right? Yeah, Tectonic. Sorry, Tecton is the the CSE. <laughs> the, the, the CSE. Too many. Um, we, <laughs> we. So uh, what? <laughs> there <laughs> too, was too many. Too many. Yeah, yeah. Too many names. There was a work. There yeah. was actually a proposal yesterday put out by uh, the Kubernetes for Kubernetes community for a naming working group, and I was like. Hell yes, I'm all yes. for this. Yes, all naming <laughs> we need you. We in need CNCF. Help here. Yeah, <laughs> in, in CNCF, all naming should go through a committee because people, oh. uh, yeah. So, like, now I, yeah, because when and also I was talking about Tecton um, b- before this Twitch, I was talking yeah. about Tecton, Anyways. so I even have it on the brain. Um, ah, so okay, there's so. but just to make sure that we have the audience in sync yes. here because yes. not everybody understands UPI, I mean, OCP, OpenShift. Yes. Container platform. Yes. Yeah. All right. Version so, four UPI versus IPI versus run IPI. over that so, real quick. Yeah. Yeah. So that that was the the melding of of uh, what I was saying the the chocolate and peanut butter. CoreOS had Tectonic, we had OpenShift. We're going to um, uh, mix those two together, right? So um, part of that was bringing in the, the all the automation. The, the beautiful automation that CoreOS had, right? That uh, Red Red Hat Core, right? Um, Red Hat CoreOS, which was Container Linux, um, and the the, the self updating platform, right? We kind of just melded all that in together. Um, in order to get full automation, there was um, there was an opinionated way to d- deliver that, right? And that's what the 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 OpenShift IPI thing was, right? So. Um, is I run OpenShift install and it installs everything for me in an opinionated matter. Um, I don't have a lot of knobs to turn, right? right. So yeah, like, um, and, what yeah, right? like I, I can't I can't start tweaking things. Like in V3, very much like Legos, I can start sticking things wherever and make whatever I want work. However, in uh, version four, you know, in order to get fully automated, you know, that whole the whole uh, dream of I click a button and my version of Kubernetes upgrades, right? My OS right. upgrades, the whole platform takes care of itself. Um, getting that fully automated thing uh, working. So in version four, I was in the field, right? So this this was yeah, this was a while you, back, right? like you were was, in it, yeah. You, I was an essay came right. from solutions yeah. architecture, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was a, I was a field engineer, essay, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. um, and. Um, you know, the, uh, the Red Hat said, all right, you know, we're, we're, we're creating this, um, you know, uh, chocolate peanut butter goodness, and um, we're going to release it um, on AWS. And, right. um, and immediately everyone was like, oh, hey, w- um, only AWS? <laughs> and, and and so, but, I mean, you know, like, like what, what's, you know, what most, most of our customers are, um, are multi or hybrid cloud multi users, hybrid right? cloud they're doing all yeah. kinds of stuff right they're using virtualization uh they may be on other cloud providers or whatever mm-hmm. right so um uh, red hat finally said okay yeah well we have um the the ipi that's going to come out aws still but you know what we're going to have um uh, uh, the, the bare metal upi install method right um which is just a fancy way of saying a manual install of OpenShift for right and this is going to be like the catch-all for everything, right? And so, right away, me as an SA, I thought um, that's just going to be the bulk of my work, like the AWS API. Mm-hmm. Um, since I, I, since someone can do OpenShift install create cluster, like why do they need me for? Right? right. Like customers can self, you know, yeah. our customers can start self provisioning. They can do self POCs. They can. Our do customers all this stuff are smart. Themselves. You know, they know yeah. what they're doing. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So the only time they're going to need to call me in is um when they need this other catch-all right so um i took a look at the prerequisites and i was like oh there is a lot more prerequisites in four than in mm-hmm. three because in three okay. you can get a, you can get away with a lot of stuff you can get away a like i said legos right i can get a, i can make i can make it work i can make OpenShift three work without DNS, like I, I can. Yeah, you know, I, I, I've done it before. <laughs> like, like you, you can make OpenShift three like work with magic. With, yes, I, I can just like plug in those Legos, right? So, um, I created this concept of a helper node, right? So, like, what is, what, what, um, the challenge I was trying to trying to, uh, the thing I was trying to fix is that um, I needed a way to quickly get these prerequisites up, right? It yeah. was really like. like a, 
like a teaching tool for me, right? No one, no one wants to muck around with the prerequisites. Yeah, but yeah, it's good like knowledge, right? Like yeah, this yeah. is core foundational knowledge. If you're like a, a young sysadmin, you're watching this recording. If you know this stuff, you are golden. You're golden. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are golden. Um, and um, I just honestly needed a way to spin up clusters quickly. Right. Yeah. Spin Push up U, UPI clusters quickly. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, um, but at the same time, I needed to be able to practice the install manually. So it was kind of, I was kind of in this weird state where it's like, I need the prerequisites automated, but not the install. Right. Um, and so uh, the challenge is you need more prerequisites. Right. So like there's more strict DNS uh, entries. So for example, for example, like the wildcard DNS yeah. forward and reverse, you need forward right. and reverse, whereas in version three, you didn't need the reverse. Mm. Um, so you need forward and reverse records, S, uh, SRV records, service records, right? Mm. Um, which uh, actually in version 4.4, you don't really need anymore, but I still put them in. Um, right. You know, load balancers, web, you know, you know, web server, yeah, DHCP server, Pixie install. You need just, just the DHCP, the Pixie booting alone, right? Like I yeah. would want some something to help me with that, right? Mm. When you throw in the DNS, the load balancing, the web server, yeah, come on. Like, yeah. let's get it. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so, um, so really the, the helper node, which is what, what, uh, you, you pasted it on in, in the chat, but there, there it is there. Um, yeah. Um, I'll so, repaste it for folks that just joined. Yeah. So, um, so the question is what you don't need the SRV records, not anymore in version 4.4. 4. 4. Yeah. Or four newer. Um, yeah. I I've tested it without the SRV records. It does work. I the the I'm a sysadmin by tr by by trade, right? So that paranoid sysadmin in me still puts the service records in, <laughs> 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 even if I don't need them. I still put them in. But technically speaking, you do not need them. No, um, right. in version four point four. But I still put them in. I'm I'm paranoid. So I've um. Been enough outages to be like I put in every entry everywhere. So, um, so um, this is basically the 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 idea behind the um, the helper node, right? It's meant right. to help you do the install. It's not meant to do the install for you. Right. Um, this may or may not change. Uh, if you notice, it says it's under the Red Hat official GitHub page. Um, mm -hmm. Originally, it was under mine, and I was um, someone asked me to move it so I get more eyes on it. Um, a lot of the IBM guys actually has a lot of PRs on it. Um, oh, um, good. Yeah, yeah. It's been they they've been they've been using so, the crap out of it. So yeah, like I think right after the merger, I got a knock on the door from the folks that run Rocks over at IBM Cloud. Mm -hmm. They're like, "Hey, we need some help with Ansible. We hear you like <laughs> you're the Kubernetes yeah, yeah. Ansible person." I think I pointed them either your way or at the helper node itself. Yeah. Um, and was like, hey, check this out. Um, yeah. And so, like, I, yeah, that I'm glad that they're doing that because there's like three or four of them and they're all trying to do the the entire, uh, the, the the whole Rocks program for IBM. So yeah, yeah. The more automation, the better for them. The more, yeah, exactly. Um, so, and the, I had a bunch of PRs. Actually, the biggest PR was that the helper node on Z, right? IBM Z. Like, ow. Like yeah, or or power up uh, and uh, power PC as well. Like there's like all kinds of um, okay. PRs okay. for the IBM guys. They they've been they've been busy. Like I just stick to x86, but there's there's a yeah yeah, yeah. no like um, you've got the platforms and you want to run them. Yeah, do it. Yeah yeah. So um so yeah, originally I just like it's just meant like, hence the name helper node. Mm. It's just meant to help you with the install, not not actually do the install for you because originally it was I need. It's more like a teaching tool. I, I need to be able to do the manual install, but I, I needed to automate the prerequisites, right? right. So like there, there, there's a demarcation. Let me yeah, change like, in the future. Who knows? Right. That's yeah, yeah. That, that demarcation point between you have to bring this to the party before the party starts kind of thing, right? Like, yeah, correct. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. I need my cheese plate prepared yeah. before I bring it to the party, right? Artesian. So, artesian artesian yeah. cheese plate. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, exactly. I need a charcuterie. Oh mm -hmm. man, uh, I think Andrew's gonna make fun of me because I'm Californian. Anyways, mm. um, <laughs> I like a good cheese plate. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> um, 
actually, uh, yeah, like the whole, I could tell a whole story about cheese plate. I got, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. So, um, so it has two modes, right? So it has, uh, a standard mode, which is like DHCP, right? It just does everything for right. you. Right. Um, okay. but obviously not everyone does DHCP and quite frankly, most of my installs were not DHCP. So I had a static IP mode. There's mm -hmm. two modes, right? So static IP and DHCP mode. Um, I build and test this on libvirt, but it's agnostic to the platform, right? So like when I built this, I want to be able to run it in the cloud, anywhere, yeah. libvirt on bare metal. Like I, um, yeah, I, I just use libvirt as bare metal, but mm -hmm. I don't, you know, um, and I test it on libvirt, but it, it's, it's, I built it with that ag agnostic um, in right. environment in mind, right? So, which, which yeah. is probably why the IBM guys were able to do the whole power exactly thing, right? right. Like yeah. if you can if you can port it, then you've done something very well. If you yeah, can port yeah. to other so architectures, like they were able to port it. I was like, all right, yeah. Good. yeah you can port to, port to other architectures pretty simply. Like you've done a good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I try to keep it relatively up to date, right? So, like, I, I'm, you know, I do right now it's on 4.4. I try to do it like every other Z stream. They've been releasing so many. Yeah, um, the Z streams have been coming pretty hot and fast. Pretty, lately. pretty yeah. fast. So like I've been um actually just standardizing on the Y. So um mm. <laughs> but like yeah. but but you know what's what's awesome about um again my metaphor about the chocolate and the peanut butter is that with uh, tectonic, right? You can just click the button, right? So now on OpenShift, you just click the update button. So if you're mm -hmm. if you're on an old Z version, just click the update button, right? So yeah, that's my, that's how that's how I close that uh, that issue, right? It's not the latest version. <laughs> click the update button, close, won't fix. Exactly. Um, um, it's it's meant for lab environments. You can use can use it for like POCs and technically speaking, I um, if you use rel bits, the node itself is technically supported by Red Hat because you're just using rel bits and you're using right. um, the playbook isn't supported. And actually, if I if I click this real quick, and if you guys go like um, big support- hot letters, yeah. Yeah, support. support Increase your input. font size there, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Support the actually- clear red exclamation point. Um, the uh, support actually made me put this up there because I guess they were getting calls. Um, you're famous. So the actual playbook, it's <laughs> the actual playbook itself isn't supported. But like, okay. if you're using rel, and the I'll, node I'll over, would be supported. The underlying systems. Yeah, if you use if you're like the, from rel base. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you're using like our Red Hat repos and rel, the actual node itself is technically mm -hmm. supported. Like, it's you know, you're, you're not doing anything that's not supported. Right. Um, and then um, I built it. I mainly use uh, CentOS. Um, sure. Sometimes I'll use rel. CentOS, I have tests for both. Um, sometimes I'll skip a test for RHEL just because if it works on CentOS, I've done it enough times. I'm not doing anything special that it, it won't work on RHEL. So. Right, you're not um, throwing it. You're, you're using base packages. So yeah, base packages. That's it should be simple enough, yeah. Um, the only time I deviate is for a while there, Ansible 2.9 wasn't available on RHEL, but then it was, so. Mm. Um, oh yeah, I remember you talking about that. Yeah, but now it is, so now it's available cool. for you, so. Um, you know, draw me a picture. All right. I'm, um, I'm a pictures worth a thousand words type of guy. Right. So this is how it kind of looks like, right. You're on a network somewhere. Mm. You're, you know, you're on your laptop. You may have other services, right. Um, on your network. Um, and the helper node sits on that network. Right. So it's, it's essentially another node. Okay. Um, and, um, it's, it's running all these services and it's in service to OpenShift, right? So you're running three masters and two workers, right? Which is the minimum for OpenShift. Mm -hmm. Since it runs a DNS server, you technically have to change your DNS settings on your laptop. However, you can delegate DNS. So like if you have a DNS server on your network, you can mm -hmm. delegate a subdomain to the helper node and then everything just works out. So, um, oh, cool. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's optional. Although I highly recommend it just because you don't have to fiddle with things. Yeah. Like if you have a standard, you know, domain for like, and for, you know, substantial infrastructure, like the things hosted on helper node, you put it there under that domain. You know, most companies have some kind of infrastructure domain they use. So yeah, yeah. that makes sense. See, um, but you don't have to, I mean, if you want to keep your OpenShift um, installation, like isolated, if you're doing testing or something, um, it'll just, it'll still work or you can delegate it. And then all of a sudden everyone can see it. So, mm -hmm. you know, 
again, I like to keep it flexible. Um, and, um, and yeah, it's actually not, nothing really that special. Um, you have to do, you have to uh, keep in mind and you'll see it when we actually go through the installation process and everything that, um, the masters and the workers do have to like keep pointing back to the helper. Right. So it's, it's essentially, um, they are, uh, uh, they need the helper, <laughs> right. In order to run, right. Like if, if you're going to, if you're going to do it this way, um, and so, but if you delegate DNS, it shouldn't be too, too much of a, of a hassle. Um, okay. So not too, not too much of a complex. Um, not crazy. Nothing crazy. It's, um, you know, very, a very operations way of doing things. Um, Good. Just because just that's my background. So. This is how an ops guy would solve this problem, right? <laughs> um, they've, uh, the, the bare metal um, IPI guys, um, you know, that's the bare metal API that's uh, coming mm -hmm. in the future. Um, right. They, you know, solved it in, in a different way, like an engineering way. It's just funny how just different people solve it in different ways. This is just mm -hmm. how a, an admin would solve it. So, um, and finally, <laughs> the last last slide, right? Okay. So, and then we'll, we'll actually start getting into certain things, yes. right? So, um, I have a server. I actually have a uh, physical, I have a Intel NUC, uh, Hades Canyon. Cool. That I have specifically for this task, right? It's uh, brand new, brand new in that I just uh, reinstalled the OS on it. Um, okay. I have some heavy hardware you're throwing at this. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. as, yeah, yeah. So, um, and I installed the OS and maybe uh, I installed VNC so we can VNC into it. But other than that, cool. it's kind of a base install. So, we're really starting from, like you said, Flower water like we're, we're, gonna, <laughs> we're gonna do this from scratch right so everyone we're, we're gonna see this here um so i'm gonna ssh at vnc into my virtual server so you'll see me go from my laptop to my virtual server so i'm only using those two right so cool. um i have eight vcpus um i suggest 12 eight cpus gets you just enough to install it that's about it Hmm. Probably blowing. So if you want to like run workloads and stuff, um, I suggest more uh, or like testing more CPUs, uh, 64 gigs of RAM, which mm -hmm. is just barely enough. Like I said, uh, terabyte, okay. right? I'm running RHEL and mm -hmm. inside the virtual server, I'm going to create a virtual network and everything's going to live inside this virtual network, right? It's going to NAT to the internet, obviously, in order to um, uh, be able to pull those images from Quay. Right. Um, hopefully Quay stays up. Um, that's right <laughs> and then um don't tempt I'm, the demo yeah don't, don't yeah God i know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> Good I, Lord. I, I actually i actually thought about us uh, uh, mirroring the repo just so i have a backup but i didn't have a chance to so we're actually gonna oh, just, gosh. Uh, see okay. my pants um and then um i'm using that network address space uh, the reason i'm using that network address space you'll see that network address space used throughout the helper node is simply because the person helping me built it was helping me test it. Uh, one of my fellow essays, um, uh, Nicholas Schutz, if you're watching, thank mm. you. Um, he, uh, that's the network address space he used. So since he was using it and I didn't want, uh, I wanted to have like for like, so I just ended up sticking to that. So cool. So yeah. So um, yeah, so let's get started. Right. So, um, here, um, so you guys have the link to the repo, right? Which, which I'm showing here, um, has some of the, uh, some of the informations here, uh, that I explained already here. So I'm not going to read them again. Um, um, you have to choose a cluster ID and a domain, right? So you have a domain, you have to choose a cluster ID and this will, um, be the basis DNS for everything, right? So I'm going to use OCP4 and example.com. So, yeah. um, and that'll, you know, everything will have a DNS of something.ocp4.example.com. So, um, like master1.ocp4, whatever, right? Apps, you know, .ocp4.example. So, like, you just have to, you know, um, keep that in mind that you have to, um, you, have, you have to know that up front and then, um, and then delegate that subdomain, right? So, for example, delegate ocp4.example.com to the helper node, whatever that IP address is going to be. Right. So, yeah. Um, so that's is um, that's a recommendation. Um, 
So um, using the playbook is really easy, right? So you, um, you install CentOS or L uh, version eight, seven or eight works. I've been using eight lately. So I don't know if there's any regression. No one has complained yet. So maybe I think everyone's using eight now. Um, these are minimum, right? For right. these CPUs, four gigs of wire, 30 gigs of hard drive. So like just at least have that. Mm -hmm. um, and once you install it, right, um, either uh, enable these repos as I listed up here, um, or if you're using CentOS or whatever, just right. um, install Apple. Apple, right, to get cool. Ansible 2.2. Uh, sorry, 2.9. 2.2. That's when I learned Ansible is 2.2. <laughs> I was about to say 2.2. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> yeah, 2.9. Sorry, 2.9, 2.9. Um, and then you basically, you get clone this repo, and then... Um, you uh, set up the bars.yaml file, which I'll go over when when I um, when I set it up uh, in a bit, and then um, and then run the playbook, and then like you're essentially ready to do the right. install. Cool. So it it, it should be really uh, foolproof here. I have a helper script, which I'll, I'll I'll go over. A lot of people don't know about the helper. No, there's like a lot of little nice um, day two y stuff that it can do for you. Oh, okay. Um, because I like to keep day one in the in the playbook and any day two thing, um, you know, that's just day two stuff. So, right. Um, and I have quick starts, right? So I, I've always a Andrew. Um, I always talk to An uh, Andrew about this. Is like I, I always like the concept of quick starts, right? Documentation is great, mm -hmm. um, but I love quick starts, right? Like, tell me right. how to do one, two, three, just to get it up and running real quick, and then I'll dive deep into the docs later. Right. Um, um, I think Eric Jacobs famously always says that uh, there, there's a manual that tells you um, what what each component does on a plane, but there's no manual to tell you how to land the plane, right? Like, I, right. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I want to be like, put the I, gear I down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here's how to put the gear down. I don't care what this knob does. Yeah. Tell me how to land the plane, right? Right, um, yeah. Um, huh. So, yeah. So then, um, oh, someone says that... Um, Someone reported issues with CentOS 8 in the UPI blog. Medium blog. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm okay. supposed to have him we'll on here. We'll see. Think. We'll see if, yeah. We'll see if we run into those. So, yeah. Here we go. Cool. He was doing it on a vSphere. So, yeah. Oh, it might, it might be a vSphere thing. I don't know. I mm. guess we'll see. Um, so, yeah. So, this is, we'll be, um, so I guess I'll ask, I'll ask, I'll ask you and I'll ask, I'll ask everyone's watching. Should I do a, um, DHCP install or a static IP install? What would be the, uh, I'm starting from scratch. I, so, so it's the I same mean, amount of work either way. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. I mean, whatever. It, yeah. Well, somebody in the chat was here. He says, uh, let's do DHCP. So yeah, let's, okay, let's cool. hit it. All right. So we'll do, um, so, um, yeah, since we owe you a t-shirt, um, mm. but <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, oh yeah. So we saw static before with Andrew. Okay. Good. That's point, true. Yeah. We did. So I'll do DHCP, and if there's time left, we'll, um, you know, we'll we'll quickly go through yeah. a, a static install. Yeah, so. Kevin Price from <laughs> YouTube says yeah. it's 2020 DHCP. DHCP. It's 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 2020. Use DHCP. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> cool. So then, All right. uh, so then I'll do a DHCP. Uh, so I have this quick install. So I'm literally following the guide. So this is. Um, I'll, I'll make some. The only thing I'm not going to do in the guide is there's some uh, vert install commands. I think okay. I think it's very helpful for people to see me doing this manually. Like I want to, uh, um, not not everyone is a command line guru, right? I, I understand that. So um, that being said, I, I I'm able to um, all, all my automation is just this, just scripts, right? Obviously, so right. Um, but doing it via the, uh, there we go. Um, via the GUI, I think is also, um, could be helpful for like, um, just starting out admins, right? So I'm gonna connect yeah. to my, I have VNC open, it's my network, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> it's my network, so it's yeah, yeah. fine. So it's fine. Like, I don't person need, yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you, <laughs> yeah. So if, uh, so if you can, if you break into my network, I have bigger problems than you be able to be in. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. So. Yeah. You're too. You're a little too close to home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So I have a, um, a, uh, um, 
Rel 8. Hello Rally world. Fox here. Hello world, right? So here, yeah. um, so one of the things I'm going to do um, is in lieu of, um, actually, what I should do first is, you guys can tell I'm doing like this, this is seat my pants. Um, I'm going to SSH into it. Um, um, let's see, resolve, right? Okay, yeah. so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up um, what uh, a DNS mask, right? And mm -hmm. uh, the only reason I'm using DNS mask is because I, I don't I don't own example.com, right? So right. Um, and if you're going to do this like on a local machine and you you want to just test on a local machine, um, you don't have to do this step. Is is I guess what I'm what I'm getting around to, but I'm going to do it just for for ease of use. Um, so that's, there's actually, I have another one set up, um, I believe, yes. So if I do a CD Etsy network manager, there should be, uh, let's conf. Yeah. Use DNS. Yeah. So what does that look like? Very easy. Okay. So I will, uh, do that. So Etsy network manager, um, conf .d. Right, so if I do it, um, yeah, there we go. So then I use, uh, I'm just gonna use the same file names. So in case you guys, I guess I could base 64 the file and just copy them over, but I literally, I literally, yeah, I literally wanna do this manually. I'll, I wanna emulate what someone at home would do. Um, I like how you so, said someone at home would do. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> for for all you for all of these at home, uh, I don't think I need anything to dispatcher. No, uh, and then I just need the DNS mask. Dot D files, right? So yeah, for example, dot com. So let's cat DNS mask dot D. Yeah. So example dot com. I want seven dot seven seven. Um, okay. And then so I go to DNS mask dot D. Maybe I... Someone in chat says, us lowly home people. Yeah, us lowly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, and again, lucky sevens is the reason why I use dot seven seven. You can use whatever IP address you want for your helper. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, um, cat, uh, ness, mess dot D. And then, um, you need to add this config in order for uh, DNS mask to slurp your Etsy host file. Um, right. So you have to do that. So are you mucking with the Etsy host file as you go through the helper node stuff? No, but okay. just in case you need it. Okay. I don't need, I don't need it, but who knows? I I've been known to add stuff to my, um, host file as, as problems arise. Yeah. Yeah. yeah as problems you. arise. I'm like, I, 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 don't, not, <laughs> I, I feel not, you. Yeah. <laughs> not in this case, but, um, uh, okay. So this yeah, is I'm my, a big fan of adding DNS records. Not, but yeah. Yeah. Not, not notes, host so, file. yeah. 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 Although with Ansible, you can have one master host file for your entire Yes. Cluster, right? So technically, you can have poor man's DNS, I guess. You um, you really could. Yeah. I mean, in theory, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So then, uh, ps -F grep DNS mask is... Okay, so it's running. So I need to restart right. Network Manager, I think. Yes. Someone help me out here. Uh, if, you, network, if you mucked with it, you need to restart it. Manager. And then uh, DNS mask. Not found. Okay. Um... Oh, so I guess that I guess that should work. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so step one. Okay. So uh, basically, just saying, anytime someone asks for example dot com, go to the helper node. Um, again, you don't have to do this. I'm just doing it for this demonstration here. So, mm -hmm. um, so what's the first step, right? So the first step is what does the doc say? Um, uh, let's create. Do I need to work in directories? I mean, uh, technically, let's... any directory you're going to hit on that node is a working directory, but yeah. Yeah, so let's, let's do that. So let's, uh, and then it's a KDIR, and let's CD into that. All right, so we have a working directory. Um, so there's a virtual network uh, configuration, mm -hmm. right? So all this is is basically libvirt that tells you that 
Hey, it's a seven network. Yeah, it's a seven network. <laughs> yeah. That's that's all, and, and it's natting, right? So I'm natting yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Uh, to um. So there's really nothing. You can download this file and use it here, or you can do it from the from the UI here. So if you go to um to your vert manager here, and then do um I have to click here mm -hmm. uh, preferences. No. Mm -mm. Uh, connection, de connection details. Details. There it is. Yeah. Virtual networks. Cool. So uh, you just click this little plus button. Um, we'll call this uh, open. Oops, open shift. Um, Got to remember the F four. So I'm gonna do a NAT to any physical device, right? I don't care. Um, yeah. I'm gonna Whatever's do available. a yeah seven. Dot zero. I'm going to disable DHCP. So this is important. Why? Because I'm running DHCP on the helper node. So I don't need right. DHCP. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much it, right? OpenShift 4, NAT, any physical device, right? I want to NAT to whatever connections actually. Just give me out to the internet. Yeah, yeah. give me out to the internet. I don't, I don't care how you do it. <laughs> I got to um, download some packages. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want to download some stuff. Um, and then uh, 7.0 slash 24, whatever network works for you is fine. Um, IPv6, I don't need IPv6. And then I don't care about the DNS domain because I'm going to host DNS, right? So then. Um, but but what if? Well, never mind. Now, I, I I love it when people <laughs> are like, let's use DHCP, but not IPv6. Why the fuck not? You're using DHCP. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could use DHCP. I mean, I'm I'm IPv6, but I just don't care. Yeah, like yeah, yeah I think, you know, right? using like, IPv6, but well, yeah, it, if if you like if you like you're, you're if you're one of those people that's like yeah, yeah. TCP, but not IPv6. I'm like, why? <laughs> yeah, like, why? <laughs> but for this, who yeah. cares? Yeah. Yeah, for this, who cares, right? So, um, so here, uh, this is OpenShift four. Activate on boot, NAT. So very easy. Yep. Um, done. Step one done. We're almost there. Woohoo! So I provide a kickstart for the helper node, um, cool. just to make things easier. Yeah. Thank you um, for that. So you can just either use uh, the seven or the eight. A kickstart and then use the vert install file to um uh kickstart right that mm. um actually but run the kickstart actually yeah to actually yeah. run it and then you the, it's like unattended right like you can just yeah. run it um, um i am not gonna do that so what i'm gonna do is i'm just create it manually here because this is what oh, okay do. cool yeah um so let's go to uh let me check the iso here i want centos 8. okay Forward. And then, um, what did I recommend here? I recommended four or eight. Yeah, I four forget. or something like that. Uh, oh, you're oh, gonna have to two have. by two by four. It says here. Yeah, two by four. There you go. Okay, so it's uh, forty ninety six, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, correct. And then Mondo. I'm gonna do fifty just because it's a SMGs good number. Jeez, fifty. I always call this OCP four a helper. The reason I put A is because it'll be the first one on the list. Um, <laughs> you can name it whatever you want, <laughs> but that's the background, right? So like I put a helper, um, in camel case, um, and then, uh, it's like open shift four, obviously, cause mm -hmm. OpenShift, that's the network I want to be on. Right. Do, 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 do. So this is, this is very much literally watching paint, right? But yeah, but you know, like the, I'm glad you're doing this with the GUI because this is actually how I would do it because I really... I uh, just never latched on to the KVM command line for whatever reason. I don't know why, right? Like it just didn't stick. Yeah. Uh, so it's, yeah, I've been I spent a lot of times on the man pages for the automation. So yeah, right. I feel your pain. Yeah. I feel so your pain. like yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I, when I'm tinkering with KVM locally, it's in the UI. Yeah. So here, um, this is just a basic install, right? So let's yeah. go to. Yeah, whatever. Uh, full disk. Yeah, that automatic partition. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I am network. All right. So let's configure this. Um, yes. connect. Right. Automatically connect. Yep. And then I want manual. All right. So I want one nine two one six eight dot seven dot seven dot seven nine two dot one six eight dot. Actually, for this, I'll put uh, eight dot eight dot eight eight. Oh, that's the gateway. Yeah, you can't put or that the, for the gateway. Yeah, you can't put that in the gateway. <laughs> I mean, you can. You just won't be able you to You could. Around. It'd be really, really <laughs> bad. But you, I mean, yeah. 4-4. Four, four. 
or I can do what what Amy did. I could do eight dot eight dot. I do the four. eight dot eight dot eight, and then the one dot one dot one dot one. Yeah, and oh, I always yeah, 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 yeah. So we you're not. And now I'm you. not. I'm not. There's a new one I have to memorize because it's the uh, they're doing uh, like a malware filtering one too. So, oh, yeah, that's, yeah that's what I've defaulted my house over to. So it's kind of nice. Yeah, so so yeah, Langdon said um, vert install. Yeah, so like that's oh that's yeah, what you used. should check out vert install. Yeah. And yes. Vert yeah, vert, I, I never used vert, vert builder, but I do use vert install uh, from for my uh, automation, and I, I do call out vert install. But um, vert install is easier, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't say it's easy. <laughs> no, I mean because look at all the flags, right? Yeah, like, yeah, that's, yeah. I would that's say, what kills yeah. me, right? Like syntax yeah. is my is the devil for me, right? Like when I got my Ansible certs, I was like, oh my god, this is yeah, right. Yeah, like, yeah. Yes, I made yes. sure that like I knew the Ansible like well, okay, it, by hand. Yeah, like by so, by memory or like you right. like develop the muscle memory. Exactly. So yeah, like with the flags, it's just in syntax and everything else. It's like yeah. this is why GUIs were invented, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, I am in LA, so I'll just put LA here. And that's... Did you know that there is actually a Detroit TZ file? Is there? Yes. Interesting. It, uh, I think it has gone to just a sim link of New York, but it used to be a completely different file for some reason. Well, Way back so... in the day, Detroit yeah. had its own TZ file. Well, I mean, I guess you're so f like We're, we are so far west, but yeah. we are still in the Eastern time zone. That's that's that may be weird for like sunrise and sunset for you guys. I would oh, it's totally oh. it's totally weird in the 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 summer and winter months. Yeah, it's yeah. it's still light out at ten o'clock at night right now. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. just crazy. Yeah, you're so far. Amy oh. says it's another country. Yeah, it's another country. <laughs> Detroit, Detroit can she's, be another country. Yeah. She said she. <laughs> no, that that actually stemmed from a Slack conversation where I was like, it was like it went from like snow and craziness to like thunderstorms in one day here <laughs> mm -hmm. and she's That's like right. you had, and you sunny and nice yeah well you had a thunderstorm um no you had a snowstorm and like the next day you showed a picture and it was all sunny outside so i'm like yeah. wow yeah you and had no like, snow all, yeah we no had like snow. a yeah. torrential snow and then all of a sudden it was just gone yeah um so yeah, yeah i didn't do it yeah i didn't do anything special just Nothing special. Uh, set, hit begin and install let's get this thing going yeah so sure, the yeah. the only thing i recommend is having a, a minimal minimum install right just to make it as small oh, as possible. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have to do it that way. I, I just I just do it that way. And then um, a root password. Let's set this to Red Hat just so I can remember. Password is fails. Dictionary check. Do it anyway. Shit. And then I don't want to use it, right? So, um, um, oh, there's politics involved. Oh, Langdon says there's a... I had a long conversation with the TZ files maintainer. Oh, oh, politics God, about politics. Detroit? I guess about maintaining time. Oh no, there's oh dude, don't get me oh, oh don't get me started on time, right? Like I had to learn all about time in the military, uh, right? Like it's it's a thing, right? Like yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. there's there's not like you know, they use Zulu time in the military, which is oh, me now. Interesting. But it used yeah. to be GMT and now it's UTC because hmm. it was created by GPS kind of deal or whatever. The history is there. I forget the exact relation, but the every everything that the military uses uses GPS for timing, right? Yeah. Unless it needs more precision stuff. So the uh the the amount of people involved in creating time zones around the world mm -hmm. is insane. Uh, and then having to work with like people, not having to work, but like working with people that I did in like Afghanistan, where it's like a thirty minute off cycle. Oh, okay. or or yeah. Le, yeah, like Langdon said, North Korea is now forty five minutes off cycle. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, in Egypt, but the Egyptian president one day decided to change the summertime one day before the uh, one day oh, the before US the actual event. He decided, oh, yeah, wow. yeah, okay. Bad wow. times. Ah. <laughs> uh, Decided to change the summertime one day before. Wow, that's crazy. Some guy said, and I guess made a case for like, let's just put everyone on UTC time. I would love to. 
just like I would just, absolutely like, love if, to. So right, like, like your stores yeah. are open from you know four to five, or you know, four to who five, cares? Yeah. right? Like, like you yeah, know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> right? Like who cares what time it is? And... Well, who cares where the sun is right. relative to what yeah. the time is? Right? Yeah, like right. who cares? Like, it's, yeah, so. it's all arbitrary. <laughs> time is yeah. actually a human construct. We can yeah. actually f with it. You know, right? As far as where what time it is on earth we can we can do that yeah we can do that yeah so i, I think i think that'd be uh that'd be great just everyone just on utc so you uh, call me at utc Done. you know 11 yeah so that's what I we did in the military because we had yeah. to do it like that there's the no con- yeah there's no conversion but then it got confusing it. for the 30 and 45 minute offset folks yeah yeah uh fun times so yeah um, time is crazy anyways go ahead so, so it says here um so it says uh, create but do not install six hmm. empty VMs. Okay. Um, you got you got to do the create and install. Um, I think I'm gonna create them. So the reason why you need to create them but not install them, this 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 is that like this, a resource contention thing? No, it's because of how the helper node installs the HTTP. So um, okay. it, it'll get a little ugly, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So um. Oh, by the way, the, uh, the helper node is done. I'll let that reboot. So I'll, I'll close this and then I'll create, um, right. Uh, so let's, um, I don't, yeah, see what the, pro- the problem is, is that uh, pixie boot. Okay. There we go. Right. I'm going to do a pixie boot, right? So if we're doing yeah. DHCP, I'm going to do the, the pixie boot. Um, um, Red Hat. So I'm doing obviously RHEL Core OS, but I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna pick RHEL Enterprise Linux eight unknown because that's right. essentially that, that's yeah. all KVM knows. So um, this will be a master. So the master will be um, what's the minimum on masters? This, this what does Eric say? Eric, uh, Eric says look at the docs, right? So that's what always look at the docs. What's the minimum? Um, so let's go, I want to um, say, yeah, uh, installing on bare metal, bare metal, uh, required. It's somewhere here, right? Scroll uh, down. Keep going. Okay. No, scroll down. There it is. It's, it's in a thing. Yeah. Um, oh, actually I need a bootstrap for, okay. Yeah. So, but, yeah. um, four, four by 16. For and the then your control plane nodes are four by 16 and then your workers are two by eight. Two by eight. Yeah. Will that work? What do I say? Oops. I don't want to. I say four by twelve for masters, hmm. four by eight for bootstrap and ma- and, workers. and workers. Okay, so, Wonder why. Hmm. just speed things up, I guess. Yeah. So what I say, masters. <laughs> I mean, uh, those CPUs aren't going to be that busy, <laughs> you know, right? Like, oh, four by sixteen. So let's do that. So let's do probably resource constraint, but let's do uh, what's someone give me a um, quick math uh, sixteen. 16 uh, uh, 384 is it 16 384 do we know is that no 16 well that, that's that's nine, your guess any other guesses well because we can just do the, the math but 81 92 right? 16 384 is what andrew says so i think you're right so let's see here let's go what is what is the math it's a 1024 right by 16. 1024 that's right yeah duh. <laughs> Sixteen, three, four, eight, four. Three, yeah. four. There, there you go. Boom. Boom. <laughs> you know what? That's that's the uh, that's the second time I've tested your math and you got it right. So ah, <laughs> and I'm terrible at math. This makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> Christian says I'm good at math. I'm making yeah, a yeah, t-shirt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I set uh, sixteen by four, right? So sixteen, three, eighty-four by four. Um, and this is the master. Uh, one hundred twenty gigs of RAM. Right. Um, and then we'll call this. Uh, OCP four. So I um, see Langdon. I see your question. I'm going to answer it here in a second. Uh, master, what do we want? Zero. Master one. Do we want zero base? One base? It doesn't matter. But uh, I don't. And you could freaking call the Star Wars characters. I don't. All care. right. So then we'll do master. <laughs> we'll do master one. Um, and then we'll do um, virtual four. Right. So right. Um, this doesn't support Pixie, but I've done it. So, um, but we'll see. I've never actually done this part in the GUI, so we'll see. Hmm. Okay. Oh, so yeah. Langan's question is interesting. It's uh, if it lays down all the prereqs, what if I don't want to do the, the the install prereqs either? Right. Like that's where UPI comes in. I feel like at that point, Langdon. But it is a good question. I'm sorry, IPI. Uh, I, I always get those confused somehow. 
the if if you don't want to do any of the installs right like you can do what we call ipi installs which is infrastructure provision installers uh but it's all automated it's opinionated it's going to be quick it's going to be uh exactly what you tell it uh in whatever cloud you tell it to go uh it's supported in certain places go to openshift dot com slash try and you can see all the places that you can use the uh, IPI uh, <clears throat> installer. It's like the double entendre of IPI installer. Um, but the the uh, the next way would be to somehow automate what Christian's doing right now. Right. Like taking his helper node creation process and making that an Ansible playbook. Um, right, like building the nodes in your vert KVM stack and having that all ansibilized would be like the next step in this. But it's a helper node. You might not want an opinionated layout. So again, you'd have to do a lot of uh, do I want, you know, I have to have three masters, but do I want two workers? Do I want more workers? You know, that kind of stuff. You'd have to programmatically put all that in. And when you start dealing with virtualization environments, a lot of variation comes in, right? So, you know, vert versus vSphere versus, you know, Zen, right? Like that's, that would need a lot of effort. So yeah, UPI, you install it, IPI, Red Hat handles the install essentially. So yeah, um, that's why we did IPI because people didn't want to muck with, you know, the steps and processes of building out uh, clusters themselves. Um, you know, we can make it easy. So we made it easy with operators. Um, There's actually been some uh, people that incorporate my playbook into their playbook. So um, yeah, like so yeah, you, I, can, you can definitely, you can definitely do that. Yeah. <clears throat> At least it might be beneficial to automate the DNS DNS mass stuff. I feel like that's not second nature to everyone. Yeah. What? DNS is not second nature yeah. to everyone? <laughs> what? Well the, the DNS mass, you don't you don't <laughs> well and also you don't have to do it because um I just do it because I'm just running this locally on this machine, but um and I'm using a fake domain. But um if you're gonna run this in an all in one machine. And like that's gonna be your dev machine, yeah. Maybe like automate the uh, the DNS mask stuff here. Langdon yeah. actually just showed me. I don't, I was today years old when when I realized you can do this. You just type this in GNOME, and it gives you the answer. So yeah, the same um, thing in uh, Mac. Like if you hit the uh, if you hit Command Spacebar on Mac, same thing. You can do calcs right there. So uh, I went ahead and um, created oh, wow. the, the bootstraps and the master. Basically, I just I created one and I just cloned them. Um, Cron Siler, okay. thank you. Uh, yeah. He says, Christian, you're helping yeah. out done good in my installation. Oh, cool. Cool. Glad, glad, glad to see it help. Yeah. Are, is, uh, hence, is that in prod, Cron Silo, or yeah, is I'm that in, in some place well, else? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, well <laughs> FYI, and I'll, I'll, I'll get it to, um, uh, I'll get into this later, but like one of the issues that I, that I, that I raised is that I want to make the helper node HA. So you can actually run it in HA because, oh. like, with with Keep Alive D, you can technically run all these services in Keep Alive D. So yeah, um, yeah, 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 totally. So if if anyone has cycles and wants to help me out with that, I will give you a T-shirt. Um, so yeah, so I I, I did <laughs> as soon as we figure out how to get you a T-shirt. As soon as we figure out how to get you a T-shirt, we'll give you that T-shirt. Um, it is a yeah, sticky so, note right here. <laughs> it is a sticky note. Yeah. <laughs> how do I ship a T-shirt to Saudi Arabia yeah. as a sticky note on my desk right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once we figure that out, yeah. <laughs> Once I get um, that figured out. <laughs> um, so yeah, so essentially, I just I just did it. I just created just an empty right because we're not installing it yet, right? We need to prepare the helper node. So um, the helper node is now installed, right? So then we can um, uh, we can ping that, right? We can ping uh, seven dot seven seven, um, and we can SSH into it. And then this is Red Hat, I think. Cool. We got helper node up and running. Um, installed at least, right? So I install for this is CentOS, Cento mm -hmm. right? So CentOS 8. Um, so if you're using RHEL 8, you don't need to install uh, Apple, right? right? Because you 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 just install 
um, you enable this repo, right? The Ansible 2.9, RHEL 8 mm -hmm. for x86, and RHEL 8 app string RPMs. And um, you enable those three for, for RHEL, right? In CentOS, you can install Apple. Um, actually, I actually think there's a, there's an Ansible um, 2.9 in just in the in the CentOS repos. I think someone told me that. So let's let's just take a look. Should be, yeah, I would think. I mean, I would think if it's in the RHEL repos, they, they'll have a version of it somewhere. Right. There you go. So it says right here, sense release, Ansible. So let's, all right, let's, extras. All right, let's try it. Let's see oh, yeah, what happens. This, so this is the first. By the way, for you watching, this is the first time I'm doing this. This. Oh yeah, that nine. Yeah, totally. I should hold on. You should, I, yeah. My, should probably. Yeah. I, you do install. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, does okay, that give me, so, give me Ansible? No, it just gives me. The no, that gives you the repo for Ansible. I think. Gotcha. Or All maybe, right. So oh, I don't know. So in lieu of that, you in, instead of installing Apple, you can just use the the repos. Or, right. Um, and then let's install Ansible yums. and Git. Right. So. I need Ansible and I need Git. So let's let's get let's get it going. Yep, gotta get our Git. Gotta get Git. All right. Git 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 Git. Gotta get Git. Gotta get that Git. And so. And, and then Ansible's after there that. The whole nine yards. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's let's check the version of Ansible here. That's two nine nine nine. All right. Yeah. So well, I made all the next today yeah, I, made, I learned yeah. that there's today a learned. <laughs> repo for uh Ansible 29 and CentOS. Yeah. Cool. So I have um so I may augment the, the quick start then because Yeah, because like I guess you don't need it. You don't need Apple. The less yeah. I mean not the like less, Apple's bad, but like the, the yeah, more you less can use the filter more. and stuff. Uh, yeah. And Ansible version. Ansible dash dash, dash, dash version. version. Yeah, I'm so confused Gives me nowadays. Two nine nine nine. All right. Yeah, there you go. All right, cool. Cool. Um, which means I could do a git clone of this guy here. So let's do that. This is cloning your actual repo onto the actual helper node right now. Correct. That's exactly what I'm doing. And then yep. it's, it says to CD to the helper node itself. So you need. Uh, you could just do a depth of one on that too. You know. You don't need the whole Yeah, I could. Thing. Yeah, I could basically just do here, right? Get yeah. clone here. Yeah, yeah. just a master, um, whatever. Yeah. So, or the um, main branch. And then, yeah, cool. So then, um, so it says get the MAC addresses for your. Uh, um, okay. For do you the, need them? The, the nodes, yeah. So this, so I'm with, going to. With the HTTP, you need them? Yes. So okay. I'm going, I'm going I can't to. can't wait. Yeah, it's great stuff. Uh, but before I do that, um, it says that I need the bars.yaml file, right? So, um, so I'm going to do things a bit out of order, but... No, I think that's important to do your bars first, to be honest yeah, with you. Because so, it kind of yeah. lays the land for you. Yeah. So uh, I just copy into wherever I am, and then I do uh, bars, right? So that's... Oh, Vim. All right, let's do... Some of Christian's niceties. It's yeah, Vim. you should you should add Vim to that install doc. Yeah. <laughs> well, not not everyone likes Vim. Some some people use Emacs, so I just yeah. Eh. Eh. So, I mean, you then, know, really stick it to them. You know, really stick it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm gonna do my dot vimrcs because you guys don't have to do this. It's just me. A set oh lord, you're setting up all kinds background. of stuff. Oh, here we go. Uh, set paste. Set new. Just just some ba just some basic stuff, just so I can get sane here. Um, okay. So, um, oh, then I can just do alias vi equals vim. Okay. So vi uh, bars yaml. So um, that's a lot of ours. That's a lot of ours. So there is. Um, I, I do make a note here. It says uh, look in the documentation page for. Um, you know, for your options, right? So if you if you click on the documentation page, it'll it'll actually it'll actually explain what each section does. Okay. Um, there is there are at the bottom of this page there are examples, right? Mm. So once you once you I, I reward you with all your reading by giving you some examples you can actually use, right? So vars using the HCP, um, 
DHCP using the nightlies. So with, with OpenShift, we have the concept of the nightlies. Oh, someone says the video's frozen. Interesting. Yeah, no, it's not frozen. Not, not over here. I act because I could see yeah, us. No, I, I got see us, us move. right here. Um, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So maybe restart, refresh yeah, the page. Hit, hit refresh. Yeah. So um, anyway, the nightlies is basically kind of a preview of what's coming up, right? So right now the nightlies are at uh, OpenShift four point five, so you can actually install that. Oh my gosh, rain's here! Wow. Um, Yay! I rain. And, <laughs> oh, you got rain! Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I give you an example of using the vars with static IPs, static IPs with nightlies. The guys at IBM did vars for for power uh, with external NFS, all kinds of fun stuff you can do with your vars. I am all right. So, um, and I should actually also mention that using the vars not nightly technically means you can actually use okd right because uh helper nodes agnostic so you can True. actually install you can actually install okd yeah. using the helper node um nice you just need to give it the proper paths to the, the the proper files here so um anyways my point being is read the doc so you know what you're setting um but i do have some uh, sane uh pre-built bars that yamls files right or stuff that that has worked for me. So, um, <laughs> pre-built YAML files, aka, works on my laptop. <laughs> works, 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 works on my laptop. <laughs> if you want to deviate from that, read read the doc and just uh, right. read what it says. Right. So, so um, uh, Twitch is reporting that their service is disrupted. Uh -oh. um, so, if you're on Twitch and you're having issues, we are also streaming to YouTube Live and Facebook Live. Yep. Uh, so feel free to jump over to those platforms. You will be part of the fun there as well. Well, uh, Facebook is, you said Facebook, right? Facebook, Facebook well. and YouTube, yep. Facebook and YouTube. So if you're having problems on Twitch, go ahead sorry. and jump on over. Oh, oh, sorry, Siri. My bad. Sorry, Siri. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, if you have an issue, jump over to one of those channels, but, um, we're going to keep pl plugging along here. Cool. Um, thank you, Rain. Yep, thank you, Rain. There we go. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So it, Langdon says it's fine here. Like I'm seeing everything okay here in Detroit, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I know there's a, just... a DDoS attack that's been going on for a few days. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's people. screwing with everybody here in the U.S. Yeah. But yeah. So I mean, find a platform the, that works and the, keep watching. Oh, the stream, <laughs> the stream box is kind it's of okay. freaking out right now. Uh oh. Oh, weird. Ten, okay. Time to drop those connections. Well. Mm. Eh, that's fine. All right. Cool. Maybe not. Um, I don't know. There's definitely some network stuff going on. Hang on. But well, I mean, you keep going. But cool. Like in yeah, the, yeah. yeah. You're gonna you're gonna mess you're gonna mess yeah. with some things. Um. Cool. So the vars YAML file um is basically sets up the uh, the helper node with um with all the uh, with all the stuff it needs in order for it to to enable all the services here, right? So uh, the first option is the disk, right? So what what is what does that actually mean? Um, the disk is, and actually that should probably be under the DHCP section. I guess I'll fix that later. Um, but the disk means is that um, in the Pixie Boot parameters, um, where I'm going to install um, Open OpenShift, right? Uh, Red Hat Core OS. Or rel core os sorry um so it's vda so essentially that should be the same uh especially if you're using the same platform right so if i go on my helper if i do fdisk dash l dev vda it is vda right so therefore um the uh the vda is uh where red hat core os is being installed so um helper node Right, so the helper section is just basically is just setting. You're telling the installer um, what you want the helper node to be called, right? So like helper, I want it to be called helper. You can you know name this whatever you want. Uh, for Langdon, you can do uh, Bastion, right? If you want, whatever um, you can you know put this as um, I don't know Yoda. Doesn't matter. You're just um, you're just telling um, the playbook. What to name this node and what its IP? So this 
helper IP adder is what the actual IP address is of your node, not what you want to set it to. So don't, don't confuse that. Um, so if I do um, uh, IP adder and I see uh, right um, 7.77, I take that, I copy that, and I paste it in here, essentially is what you do. Uh, so if you set your helper to another IP address, make sure to change that um, because it doesn't change it for you. You're just basically telling it, the helper node, um, what, um, uh, what it is, right? It's just giving information about what the helper node, right? So um, this next section, important, right? So um, this is installing DNS, right? So you're saying, um, I want, uh, my domain is example.com and my cluster ID is OCP4, meaning that my DNS, my domain is going to be ocp4.example.com. Um, and it sets up the forwarders, right? So um, there is no need to add like 8.8.8 .8 or your internal DNS to the Red Hat Core OS. You, you don't need to do that um, because my DNS server will forward that, right? So in if you're if you're doing this like if you're a customer and you're you're testing out OpenShift you'll uh, forwarder one forwarder two you'll point these to your internal DNS server right um, and then the um, and then the DHCP settings right so mm -hmm. essentially what DHCP is going to broadcast right so whatever your router is broadcast that uh, your broadcast address right. So you have to kind of know a little bit uh, about networking is what your broadcast address is, right? So can you find that out here? Yes, you can, right? So if you go yeah. to um, IP adder, uh, it tells you your broadcast address here. On the, on the and right? typically on a slash 24 network, the broadcast address will always be 255. 255. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, there is a limitation for the helper node. I called it out somewhere. I forget where. Um, right now, um, it only, it only works uh, at a slash 24, um, uh, right now, unfortunately. So, um, I mean, and I, and I, and, until does it I really need to be bigger. Uh, well, I, I mean, mean, what's the limit, what limitation are you putting in there? Right? Like that limits so, your cluster to a slash 24. Yeah. So it, it essentially limits your cluster to be mm -hmm. in, a, in a slash 24. Um, and the reason for that is, is because I haven't found a good way to create, a um, a reverse um, zone file uh, with multiple ranges, but that's got um, it. Yeah. Um, so it, uh, PR is welcome. By the way, I need help with that. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean I, I've been I've been trying I've been trying to figure that out for <laughs> for the past whatever. But um, so um, yeah, so for the network mask, right? So whatever the network mask is, that's going to be. Um, um, that's what's going to be uh, broadcast by the DHCP server. Uh, your pool start and end, these are technically arbitrary um, because, because we're going to statically assign the, the masters and the workers, right? And I'll, and I'll show you how that looks like, right? So we're basically doing DHCP with address reservation. Um, so the pool start and pool end are technically arbitrary. I like just to keep them in range just because just just because it's just the way I am. Um, and <laughs> I leave just them there. The way I am. Yeah, it's just the way I am. I leave them there just be in case you want to use your the helper node as a DHCP server for your entire cluster, you can. Um, but these are arbitrary. Uh, but I like to keep them in range. So um, the IP ID, right? So it's essentially whatever is on the left side of your slash. So like if you're slash 24, that side is um, there. Netmask ID is um there it is right so it's 255 255 dot 0 so yep. um so slash 24 i mean this is you know networking basics but slash 24 yeah. always has the net mask of uh 255 255, 255 255 0 and yeah. uh the broadcast of 255 slash 24 is usually the easiest network to kind of play with yeah. because it's easiest to uh envision um True story. My first network that I ever maintained was a slash twenty five. Nice. Oh, so yeah. you're super netting. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, um, so 
so uh, I'll pause here and, and, and kind of just show what, what this actually does before I go on to the next section, right? So um, so first is the DNS, right? So if I if you go over to the, um, to the helper node and then you go to Sorry, templates. I missed a question. <clears throat> I missed a question in chat. On VAR's part, can you just put the variable to parse in IP? Yeah, so um, I think what the question is, is that um, can you just pick up the IP using, using Ansible? Can you just pick up the IP from the um, mm -hmm. from the facts, right? Ansible right. facts. Yeah. The answer is yes. We just haven't gotten around to making that change. Um, cool. But yeah, you can you can <laughs> just have it automatically pick up. Um, I always like it to make it configurable. So either someone provides the IP or I'll pick it up automatically. Nice. Um, so for DNS, where is it? Uh, so the name dig.com. So um, essentially what I do is that here on line 33, if you guys know Jinja templates, right? Obviously oh, I take whatever forwarders, Jinja. Jinja templates, whatever forwarders you provide me, I'll put that in there. If you don't provide me any forwarders, I'm just going to assume 8.8.8.8.8 and 888844. Um, so that's Amy's favorite. Um, and then I um, create a zone file right, with your okay. cluster ID and the DNS, so that, so you see how this mapping works, right? So the DNS cluster ID, so DNS cluster ID, OCP4, and then DNS domain, which is DNS domain is example.com. So I'm creating a zone file. Um, and then I create a reverse zone file. Um, and this is, this is the problem why I can't do uh, more than, or less than slash 24. Um, it's essentially, it's expecting it to be a slash 24. So that's, right. um, and then DNS works really funny with reverses and um, anything, uh, super netting. So anyways, um, if you know the answer to the, <laughs> I don't want to get too deep into that. If you know the answer to that problem, mm -hmm. feel free to do a PR. I've been trying to fix that for forever. Um, and there's actual issue. So I actually opened an issue because I already, I already know, uh, let me see here support other network spaces, right? So if you can help me with this bug, that'd be great. Anyways, yeah. um, call to arms. Where was I here? Uh, yeah, so, and then the other part of DNS is I do create the zone file. So here's the zone file. Um, so I essentially in inject everything you're giving me in, in here in this DNS file, right? And same for, for reverse, right? Um, for DNS, so um, the entries that you you given me for your your master for the master and the workers and the bootstraps, they're going to end up in this DNS file, and I'll, I'll show you how that looks like after we run the playbook. Um, the next section was DHCP, right? So the DHCP, I do create um, a DHCPD.conf based on the entries you give me, right? So mm -hmm. the, based on the entries you give me, I'm creating a DHCP file, um, and you'll see later. The, you'll see in the, in the bars that YAML file, I'm, I'm, I'm putting the, you have to provide the, the MAC address and that's because I'm doing uh, address reservation for um, uh, DHCP, right? So, or what I like to call static DHCP, even though that's not, that sounds funny, but. Um, and then the Pixie boot is a little, um, I might, I might explain that a little, a little bit later, but just, just so you know, um, I do a Pixie boot based on the MAC address. So the MAC address serves two purposes that when you provide the helper node one, it creates the, um, uh, the entries for DHCP. So that way it gets the same IP address every time from DHCP. So I IP address reservation. And then I use the same MAC address to map to the, uh, the Pixie boot configuration, right? So if it's a master, I'm gonna, it's gonna boot off of these parameters if it's a worker, it's going to boot off these parameters, right? So, and if it's a, a the bootstrap, it'll boot off the bootstrap, right? So, um, um, so it serves two purposes, right? So you can, um, so that's the reason there. So, and then, um, so that's this is the reason why you need to provide um, this section, right? So for bootstrap, you need to give it. Um, a name, right? So I just named it Bootstrap. Uh, the IP address, I just use 20. This could be whatever address in your address space. Um, DHCP will take care of this. Yeah. 
Um, masters is fine, right? I think I named this master one. You did. So worker one, worker two. I'm not going to do a worker three. So I'll delete that section uh, because I don't have enough resources. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> this other section, this is if you want the help, if you're, this was uh, actually, this was a, a PR that um, one of the con consultants um, did. Is if, if you want, if you're using the helper as your main DNS server and you want to add other entries, you can just put them here and then um, it'll add those DNS entries for you. So um, I'm not doing anything. Um, so I'll just delete that section right here. Um, this is the basic configuration for um, the helper node, right? So part that trips people most up is probably the DHCP aspect of it. Um, yeah. But since it's a slash 24, it's not, it's not too hard. Um, so it's, uh, you can basic, basically follow this pattern. So, um, so then here, uh, I think that's it. I think what we just need now is the MAC addresses, right? So that's, someone gave me this handy dandy script here. Nice. Right. Someone did that. I, that, that wasn't me. So I was like, yeah. oh, cool. No, yeah, that's, perfect. That's awesome. Let's see if that works. <laughs> oh. Bash. Oh, uh, you actually, so not on the helper. You need to exit the helper. You actually need right. to do it on the virtualization host. And then this gives you. Uh oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, you forgot to, yeah, you forgot to I change forgot to change it. I forgot to change it. Yeah. <laughs> one, two, three. And then one. One, two, <laughs> from one to two, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there you go. So yeah, so that gives me, All right. that gives me these guys right here. So I'll just copy these. All Dems. Fun times. Uh, no, it's Red Hat. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> not that password, the other one. Yeah, not, not yeah, exactly. So um, I just, I just paste these here and I'll just, Move around now. Yeah, move around. Here. Show us your M skills. Okay, so I can do DD there. Uh, uh, and then I can teach you the trick. That join. So that's bootstrap. So delete that guy. You want Mas a trick? You want a trick? Master. Get a trick. I got a trick Let's for you if you want. Let's see here. Uh, I'm just using basic joins. If you have if you have a trick, let me know. I love I love learning. I mean, you could you could just uh, instead of DDing, just go highlight the five and hit uh, Shift D, and it should just take the rest ah, of the line, nice. and then nice. you can just hit paste on top. Oops. There you go. So yeah, you got to delete it obviously, but yeah, yeah, same thing. Sweet. I like that. Yeah, that way you're just, you don't have to muck around with new lines and everything. I like, I like your, oops, I like your newsletter and I like to subscribe. Okay. Um, I like what you have to say. I like to subscribe to your newsletter. <laughs> Funny you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, <laughs> Demopish. That's right. See, this, yeah. this is your chance. <laughs> so, yeah, I do have a newsletter, but it's on hiatus right now. Uh, Devopsish.com. Oh, no. You can't even subscribe to it right now. Like, that's how hiatus -y it is. So, uh, thank you for the shout out, Christian. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's you know, COVID nineteen is slowing things down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and Und D dollar uh, sign. Understand. What does D dollar sign do, B Bjorn? What does that do? That's yank from here to the end of the line. Ah, uh, that's right. I would imagine so. Yeah. Okay. Right. Let's see here. Am I right? Come on, Bjorn. Let me know. Yeah, or the nine. Uh huh? We have to wait for the delay. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, no, it's like a thirty-second delay right now too. So yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really long. Um, so let's see if I got this right. Yeah, um, no, our issues earlier were like external network issues. That's delete to the end of the line. Oh yeah, delete to the end of the line. Yeah. yeah. Why dollar? I guess would be. You know, oh yeah. Well, lead says subscribe to the DevOps or Telegram channel. That's that's a good point. I can drop a link to that in. Yes, so, we have a Telegram channel, and we just hang out and talk about nerdy stuff there. And there's a code of conduct. So if you do something wrong, nerd. goodbye. Nerd, nerds. 
Okay, so F E two C five six two B or not to be five E A B. Okay, so I got those right. So, um, cool. So, yeah. So, kind of just to recap before I run the playbook, um, we've uh, installed a helper node. Um, we've uh, we we. We installed an OS, right? That's going to be our helper node. So we installed the uh, we installed CentOS eight. Um, we created the MTVMs, right? That's going to be Pixie booted. Uh, we prepared the um, we prepared the helper node by you know installing um, uh, installing Ansible, Git cloning the helper node, and going over the vars that YAML file. Um, so now we're actually ready to run the playbook. Right, so um, run the playbook, run and the then playbook. Run bring the playbook's playbook. easy. Let's see, just go like this. So we'll see. You know, I guess cross your fingers. Um, it's gonna do some good stuff here. Uh oh, so search yeah, failed. Yeah, there's some some. I don't know how to get that to. I, I need to take take a look at that. That that wasn't me, by the way. Some, someone else wrote that, but like someone else wrote that. The, okay. Well, it's, it, the failure means good in this case. Yeah, so there's a way to do that. There, <laughs> yeah, there is actually a way to do that. Like, this is one of those questions that you would ask me in Slack. I, yeah, yeah, like, I think you, there's a, so what you do is you say, uh, I forget the terminology, but there's a way like, to say that, like, you know, status equal, you know, like good status equals one. Oh, right? or, or yeah, like, fa like yeah, or, or failed something like, is, yeah. Failed actually equals one. Or yeah, failed actually yeah, or equals something, something like that, yeah. other than one, yeah. So, the, the, I mean, actually, since since we're just watching here, um, does anyone actually know? Um, no, let's look it up. Actually, let's, yeah, let's look it up. Like, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. So go to the go to the let's see, Ansible, uh, uh, Ansible playbook, Ansible.com. Fail failed when is the thing. Okay. Fail. Failed win is the thing. Ansible. Error handling in playbooks. Is error handling in playbooks. There it is. Yep. There it is. So yeah, failed win will like allow you to adjust when something has actually a failure because ah. sometimes failure is expected and you need to do something, right? As a result of that failure. Yeah, so that's yeah. why it's in there. So you can gotcha. configure the failed win to you know when standard error equals zero. Or yeah. one or whatever um, you want it to be right like yeah yeah it's so, bad when it, so you can say like yeah when yeah it's, when, when it is yeah. failed that is actually passing so yeah that's typically what i do um, yeah yeah you know like if i expect something to fail and then something else happens afterwards i say this is failure this, error oh, okay. equals success yes So yeah, if you didn't know that about Ansible, now you do. There you and go. So now, 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 now I know. So there you ignore go. Ignore errors will yeah. actually just ignore errors uh, from Error Ansible success. that uh, I think it generates. Like, yeah. Anyways, um, but no, the failed win is the recommended way. Failed win. So yeah, actually, if I like, let me see if I can go fix that right now. Now there you go. PRs are welcome. Yeah. Oh, by the way, if if you guys are gonna do PRs, um, I'm I'm a little I'm a little stickler, not not a big stickler. Oh, you're um, a stickler. Do you have templates? Just do no. Actually, just just PR against Devel. Um, oh, okay. I have two branches. Just 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 PR against Devel. On, only because I like to keep master as stable. And cool. so makes sense. That's yeah. a totally normal design pattern. Yeah. I'm actually thinking about doing a third branch, like like an alpha branch or something, or, or, or something when I like... Like, you, a, like it, it may be tires, broken. like the fires branch? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Devel is probably something, like a test bed for master. Like, yeah, like essentially, yeah. like, if you run the playbook, it may break. Sort right. of branch, kind of branch. I don't know, who knows? Like, things are in uh, flight. Yeah. yeah exactly. So, um... Clone. So... Where are we here? Run playbook. Okay, cool. So playbook is done. All right, cool. So now what? So now I'm, what? I'm very happy the playbook is done. Playbook is done. So there's um, so if you want to take a look around, you can. Uh, so for example, if you do um, name d dot conf, if you uh, um, if you vim that <laughs> stable 
unstable, probably stable. Those are your new yeah. branch names. <laughs> probably stable. <yeah. laughs> probably stable. <laughs> More than likely stable. Yeah, your your uh, your mileage may vary. What is that? Um, y M M V. Yeah, Y M M V. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, so you see the forwarders are there that I put in here. Um, it sets up the the zone file and the zone file, the reverse, right, for the zone file. And if I if I want to take a look at the zone file, I can. Mm -hmm. Bar named uh, zone file, right? And it gives you all this information, um, right? Master123 has those IP address. So essentially, it just sets up basically everything you need in order to install OpenShift, right? So, um, right. however, it says, please run helper node check. Oh, well, let's do that. Yes, helper no check. So helper no what check. Helper no check. Give me, man. So tell helper me, no. Tell me you, why. So tell you why. So helper no check. So here, I needed a quick way to um, check the file, check the what my helper node did without actually looking at every file. Um, huh. So nice. if, if, yeah. yeah. So if, if you run helper no check, it gives you like a little menu of things that you can do. So if you do DNS masters, mm -hmm. it just returns what. Um, what it has set for the DNS masters, right? So, um, and it okay. actually does an, uh, a DNS lookup. So it actually does a dig, checks the forward, checks the reverse, and if these match, you know you're you know you're mm, in, you're you know you're in good business, right? Uh, uh, um, and then uh, I can do workers, right? Uh, same thing with workers, right? So you know checks DNS. There's also um, install info. Right, which is kind of lacking right now. I've been meaning to expand it. Right, um, mm -hmm. it kind of gives you like very, very high level what to do to install OpenShift. Like this is in four point two days is how old um, this thing is, but the the basic instructions are are um, are there. I can do helper node check HA proxy, and it just tells you where to go for HA proxy. Um, this is my favorite one, services. It tells you. Uh, the services that it's expecting and its mm -hmm. and its status, right? So it, oh, nice. Okay. So it's DHCP is running, uh, DNS is running, HA proxy, HTTP, and TFTP. Uh, so everything that you need is running. Um, there's also NFS info. So NFS info gives you this whole thing. So um, OpenShift and NFS has had a, a weird relationship. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's like it's is it supported? Is it not supported? Who knows? Right. Um, well, it's, how, I mean, NFS is a weird relationship, and yeah, and, like just yeah. it's I mean, it's one of those things where like NFS like literally just works everywhere, but it's like not a hundred percent the best for everything. Right? <laughs> it's not. Yeah, it's not a yeah. Swiss Army knife, right? Like, yes, it works, but is it the best thing? Mm, maybe. Yeah. So this is. Um, there's a question. Did you consider to get a hint for the helper node to the document? Oh. Um, so yeah, we um, to get something on the OpenShift documentation means that it's supported by Red Hat. So it's kind of um, yeah, it's kind of hard to put a link. Yeah, so I mean, we, we do it, we do it, but it's it's hard to get a link to something that's not supported by Red Hat. Right. It's, like it's yes, problem. it is a Red Hat thing. Yes, we have Red Hat people and IBM people working on it. But like Christian said, the helper node is supported if you do it on rel with rel packages which as we found out during the stream is now easier to do mm -hmm. um and even on centos is now easier to do so the um the idea is if you install everything with the playbook on supported hardware or supported os it is essentially supported uh as the, the state is, yeah. it is installed but the playbook yeah. is not supported at all. Playbook. So, like, if you do something and the playbook's broken, sorry, uh, it's, it's yeah, yeah. You, 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 you just file an issue, and then I'll get to it when I'm not right. Busy, like, so. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I'll, I'll I watch the repo too. So, you know, yeah, some somebody will come help. So, um, so yeah, Hopefully. so that that's that's why it's, it's just it's just it's just weird, right? When you talk about support, yeah. it's just it's just a weird conversation. Um, so the NFS setup, what it, what it does is essentially turns the helper node into an NFS server. Mm -hmm. um, for OpenShift, right? Um, and I kind of just give you the instructions here. Um, and I give a warning if you're not using at least 100 gig, right? Um, 
volume just because OpenShift uses a lot of storage really quick, especially if you're using S2I, mm -hmm. you're using the image registry a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it gets uh, big pretty quick. So, um, but you can use it, right? So like all the normal caveats, feel free to use it. Um, not everything, not every workload is support on NFS. So again, your mileage may vary, but it's there. So, um, um, so there we go. So then those are some of the information. There's some hidden, um, the helper node check. I want to expand it and there's, it's not really well documented, but I think, um, mm -hmm. um, again, if you know some cool things that could be included in the helper node check that may not fit into the actual playbook, like day two stuff, uh, feel free, um, right? Yeah, to do a PR. So it's just a bash script. So it, 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 um, it should be pretty easy for anyone to um, do updates on that. So um, cool. So the um, so now we're ready to actually install OpenShift, right? So um, so I. Uh, Okay, so two things in chat here. Uh, Any chance you can create your help node as an OVA file or similar? So there, we we have kicked around the idea of having like a like an image, mm -hmm. like a helper node image, like a backer file or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or or like a like an OVA, right? And you just yeah, OVA ISO and something. Then just yeah. Run a script, right? That in the background maybe does Ansible, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I think um. The more pressing thing is to make it HA, I think. Right, yeah. <laughs> I think the, um, yeah, like of the priority list, right? Like that should be uh, an issue that gets open. Can this be turned yeah, yeah. to? Uh, yeah, yeah. So if, if, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, that, that actually uh, is a good issue. If Cron Silo, that, please yeah. like open an issue, right? Like that's, yeah. that is a good issue. Next thing, uh, do not do your masters on NFS v3. It will be a will problem. Be there you go. Well, yeah, GPA, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because SC Linux, right? You need an NFS yeah. version four. Right. So that's so that's a good, go. good thing to call out. Good thing to know. NFS, NFS yeah. version four. That might actually be, I mean, that is in the requirements file, right? V4, I'm pretty sure. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. If it isn't, um, it is. <laughs> you may just use Packer with the Ansible content as deployment and export yeah, stuff Packer, as a template. Yeah, yeah you could do that. Uh, can you configure this for LDAP? Mm, I don't, don't see why not. Yeah, I don't see why not. Um, I've actually thought about having an LDAP server on the Oh, as part node. of the helper node? Okay. Yeah, but... Um, um, what was the decision not to dive down that rabbit hole? There were... Because it was just, it was just, um, it was just my, it was just an idea I had, and there was really no, like, no one was asking. No for need it. or no ask. Yeah, there's no yeah, need. Yeah, yeah, there was no ask, and there's no use. Like, I couldn't think of a good use case because if you're in an environment, you already have like Active Directory, right? Like, you already right. have, um, you know, like, uh, IPA yeah, you, or whatever. I mean, you could use free IPA. Well, you yeah. just said so, yeah. So you can definitely use free IPA. <laughs> can you do this um, now? That is my next step. Next step. <laughs> <laughs> IPA is actually really easy to install. <laughs> However, I have DNS installed, so that'll that'll uh, yeah it, yeah it'll conflict yeah. So yeah, um, um, cool. So yeah. Um, we can install uh, now. We can uh, yeah. Go, okay. What's that? Now, well, what lead points out most likely some people will use AD or IPA, so maybe yeah. this is something like a, a worthwhile issue to consider. It might be, yeah. It might be a worthwhile issue, um, especially yeah, if, like, you, if you delegate, like you can maybe delegate, um, if you, especially if you delegate a subdomain mm -hmm. and if you know how to like delegate like Kerberos realms or whatever, yeah. IPA, IPA will have a Kerberos realm right. in it. Um, I mean, but this does increase the knowledge factor that you need to maintain the helper node, right? Like, I mean, yeah, 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 exactly. We're, yeah. We're now, it's like a full data center almost in a, yeah, in a yeah. box. In a box, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to install OpenShift, but I mean, I guess technically you can have like a, an SMB box, right? Small, uh, uh, small, medium business. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah that's data true. center in a box. So JP that's says true. we only need one identity management solution. I 100% agree with that. Yeah. But this is a lot of places that's not the case. I mean, AD is great. Don't get me wrong but uh oftentimes there's like this 
dichotomy of some things work well with AD and some things don't, so there ends up being the second solution. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, OpenShift works with AD, right? So yeah, yeah. I wouldn't worry about that too much. <laughs> so, so, actually, so uh, who's Restream bot here? Is, is That's someone, me. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, no, no. So it's Packer with Anza with the LDAP. LDAPs. Yeah. Well, because I do have. Um, uh, IPA in my in my environment, I could technically connect the OpenShift to to IPA five. If you want me to show you how to do that, so mm, okay. if we have time, I'll do that. Um, so uh, so yeah, so let's where we install OpenShift, right? So to install OpenShift, you need an installation directory, right? So right. Um, this will um, I since I'm since I'm calling this node, um, sorry, this cluster OCP four. I'm just gonna create a directory called OCP four. This is where OpenShift stores all its um, artifacts, <laughs> um, all the installation artifacts, all the all the stuff it needs. Um, and then I like to keep things in um, um, OpenShifty things in a, mm -hmm. in a directory called OpenShift. And um, you need to go to uh, try.openshift.com. Right, and then grab that pull um, and then grab the pull secret. Right, so let's do that. Yeah. If I go to, um, oops, I didn't want it to. New window. There we go. And if I go to um, run on the bare metal, or what are you? Yeah, run on bare metal right yeah. here, and then um, download Hello, pull secret. Right, pull secret. And then this this will uh, yeah, you save, save that it. file. Yeah, and then I'll, I'll copy that over. I'll, I'll do that on, on this window here. Uh, where am I? I'll actually. If somebody wants to memorize the pull secret, yeah, I wouldn't worry too about too much about somebody seeing it. Well, I mean, and, and it's also um, um, what do you call it? it it's also free. So, like, if, right. If, by the way, you know, those are for you. You don't have to wait for OKD. You can actually install OpenShift um, OCP for free. So, um, in case you didn't know. Mm -hmm. Uh, Although OKD version four is going to be really cool. I yes. Yes. Um, so JP Dade, uh, he brings up a good point. What Red Hat mm -hmm. does not do very well is give examples. I wish OpenShift was the only thing I did. Uh, so we have had recent discussions actually last week um about how we give people like a toolbox and we say you can do anything you want with a toolbox uh but we're we're not so great uh, as a company of saying here's the toolbox and all the fun things you can do with the toolbox, with the toolbox so yeah. yeah we're actually in the process of kind of like steering that ship towards uh more more examples and solution based type uh things yeah, how uh, and, do... and this channel is part of that effort actually now. So yeah, yeah. the, the, the how to is very much important uh, across the board now because we know that just because you have OpenShift doesn't mean you're not going to use a cloud service, right? Like it, everybody uses S3 or some storage bucket kind of thing, right? Like we want to give examples like that on this channel and in documentation and everywhere else that we possibly can of how to integrate with cloud services. So yeah, um, we hear you out there yeah no we we're, hear we hear it loud and clear we hear you loud and clear trust us yeah. <laughs> been talking well, and, about and it also a as a yeah as a former customer i i, I know so I, I yeah definitely know yeah that. i feel you yeah so um one of the things actually i should call out here um if you go to the helper uh where are we here uh let's go to the quick starts no documentation is what i want uh, if you go to the documentation page for the VARs, uh, there's mm -hmm. a few things that you guys need to know. So first and foremost is um, it installs an SSH key for you. Kind so of important you, to know. Yeah. So if yeah. you if you if you ls that, it installs the SSH key for you. Um, it also um, sets up an SSH config file. So if you go over, if you cat that SSH config file. It basically you can SSH into like SSH Bootstrap or SSH Master One, and it'll automatically use the core file, and I'll actually use uh, that helper S, um, SSH key. So, not a lot of people want that. Um, right. Um, the default is true, 
uh, you can just set it to false, right? So you can, in your right. bars.yaml file, just put SSH uh, gen key to false, and then it will install that for you. So, um, so yeah, that, that's what I'm calling out in the, in the quick start is like, hey, you have, you know, it installs a, um, oops, paste. It installs an, S, an SSH key, right? So, right. Um, and then um, I even call it out here. If you want to use your own SSH key, please modify SSH config to reference your key instead. So, um, so now shouldn't, we shouldn't we all use API instead of SSH? Good question. Use what? Uh, which API? Which API? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Good question. Okay. We'll see. We'll uh, see yeah. the answer. What? Uh, yeah. Get um, back to us. Well, we'll give. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Which, which which API? one are you referencing? Yeah. The machine. Um, uh, yeah. I'm not sure which one. So um, you need to install config file, right? So um, this is a basic one, but I'll I'll install this one and then we'll go over it. Um, For the stream out there, <laughs> Red Hat loves Microsoft. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so some of the things you need to change here is your base domain, right? I'm using example.com, you're maybe using something else. Um, so this, this one trips up people a lot. It says, I am doing zero workers. You're like, what do you mean zero workers? You need, you know, you, you're installing two. Mm -hmm. um, this is telling the machine API that it, the machine API is not responsible for spinning up workers. That's all okay. this is telling, right? Yeah. So it's, it's essentially telling the machine API Hey, um, I know normally you bring up the workers. Don't bring up any workers. Those are right. installed manually. They're just there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, control plane. You have to put this to three mm. uh, because you have three masters. You can put it right. to one, but that's unsupported. Um, the metadata name, right? So this is the cluster ID, OCP4. Um, this is the one. Uh, again, remember, this is all based on your DNS domain and whatnot. So. Um, so these two options here, right? So, um, the networking, these are internal, uh, to the, um, to the OpenShift SDN, right? So the first one is the cluster networks, mm -hmm. um, 10.254.00 slash 16. Um, and then they're going to supernet that, right? They're each one of those is going to have, um, each host is going to have a subset of that, right? So one host right. is going to have 10.254.1.0 slash 24. 10. The other one's going to have 10.254.2.0/24, and this is for the uh, the container networks. So this is for the actual container, um, the container's IP address, right? Um, right. And that'll sit on the on the overlay, right? And then the service network. Similarly, um, you know, when you create a service, that's like that faux load balancer uh, that the service uses. Um, that's what you're configuring here. Yeah. And then platform equals none. Uh, because we're doing uh, bare metal UPI. So JP yeah, Date no asked where my Red Hat Fedora was. So there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mine is uh, there is a good phone. question, though. Um, mm -hmm. oh, so, Rockhound explained to get nodes on a working OpenShift. He said, I don't know for what you need to hear, but you could use OC to get into a pod on the node mm. and then RSH into that yeah. host. And da, 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 da. Yeah. You could do yeah, that. Yeah. Totally. So, um, yeah. So but for... RSH is kind of. Mm, well, it, it, um, SSH, you know. the key there is for debugging purposes only, right? Or since we're doing an install, um, right, right. you might need to actually SSH because there's like a chicken egg thing, right? So <laughs> like we need, to, we need to manage the node through the API, but if the API needs the node in order to run, and so, you know, like you just kind of get into the circular thing. So right. SSH is a great equalizer. Um, so. But yes, cor correct. And also... Um, in the future, when you SSH into a node, it'll taint the node. Right. Um, yeah. It's it's not going to be. Yeah. yeah in so the future, yeah. if you, if you're mucking around with nodes in the future with SSH as a normal thing, you're not going to be a happy camper. Yeah. <laughs> future so this, though, don't yeah. worry about it right now. Uh, yeah. One more question: Is it possible yeah. to have a mix of installer provision and manually provisioned workers? The answer is yes. The answer is yes, you can. Yeah. You can. Um, um, it's not hard to like add workers to a node once it's already up you know yeah, it, it so depends it, which direction you're yeah. going there if, if you already have ipi installed stuff and adding manually provision workers that's super easy if you're doing everything manually and then ipi in i don't know yeah, if yeah. that's possible 
Yeah. So I mean, you can in an I, but um, you can add manually add workers in IPI, but then that's more work than just doing just, just right. scaling scaling the machine. So it depends depends what your yeah, use case is for. for right. Like if you had like you know all of a sudden you had all these nodes available. Yes, that would make sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. And then the next section I want to show because it just shows my pull secret and then uh, SSH keys. But but like you said, if you memorize it, then it's good for you. So I have the pull secret there mm -hmm. and SSH key there. So um, cool. Since we're doing a manual install, we have to create the manifest first, right? So this will, um, war full warning to everyone, this will delete the install config file. So if you yes. want, yeah, I'll you copy that to like copy somewhere. that someplace else in case you need to yeah, tweak you, something. You, yeah, exactly. You rerun it for whatever reason. Um, um, so we, once you install, once you do that, it'll create a manifest directory and an OpenShift directory. Uh, note this warning is makes your control plane schedulable, um, which um, is only tech preview right now, and it might not work. Your cluster may break. So, um, so I have this uh, kind of sed command that like changes that for you. So if you cat um, manifest cluster settings schedule, right? Right now it says master schedule equals true. If you run my sed, um, set it to false, right? So just just set it to false. Um, yay sed. Yay for sed, right? And I and yeah. I say yeah, do that. Um, next, you need to generate the ignition configs, right? So the ignition configs is the actual. It actually happens. What actually does the install of Red Hat Core OS, right? So if if you look at the ignition file, um, you know Bootstrap has all kinds of stuff. Do I have? No. So let's install JQ. There we go. So they do a JQ R of the Bootstrap, right? And essentially, it just um, we can actually we can actually have a whole twitch of just talking about um, the ignition yeah. files, right? Yeah. <laughs> but just high level, this is what gets uh, written into Red Hat Core OS, right? Ignition runs in in it ram fs, right? So even before PID one runs, it runs um, very 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 early on into uh, in the um, in the boot process, and what it's used for is to set up your machines, right? Um, the question naturally is why not use cloud init? I don't know is the answer to that. This is right. this is this yeah. is just um, they needed something that only runs once. Is so it's like cloud init, but it only runs once, right? Just because it's an immutable file system, it can't run um, multiple times. So um, so yeah, uh, boots uh, the the helper is opinionated. In that yep. it 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 it's expects the ignition files to be somewhere specific, so it expects the ignition files to be in var www html ignition. Um, if you think if you want it to go somewhere else, that's fine. Just modify the playbook, yeah, and copy or whatever. But um, but make sure you do the uh, restore con there too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That restore con is is important um, because unlike Andrew. Mm. Oh, I boy. run with SC, I run with SC Linux <laughs> in enforcing, and this playbook runs in enforcing, so, yes. and it takes all the the mind work out of it. So, um, so there we go. Um, so I copy the ignition files to the ignition, restore con, and then make it world readable because it's not world readable. Um, but there we go. So we have Bootstrap, the master, and the worker in that um, in that directory. So cool. Yep. So um, the next step is to actually install Red Hat Core OS, right? Um, before I do that, I like kind of, kind of just want to show real quick. Um, what is it? Uh, Where is is it? Var. I'm asking you, like you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, why don't you grab for it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, why don't the the pixie grab <laughs> the pixie boot um, uh, settings. Is it var lib? Uh, Barlib yeah. TFTP, maybe? Uh, there yes. we go, yeah. TFTP. Um, and then it's, uh, what is it? It's something linux.com for something. Yeah. I'm not even seeing it here. Oh, Pixie. 
Pixie Linux. Sure, we do need to get Dan Washell on here to talk about SE Linux. Like, just give me a history lesson on SE Linux, Dan. You can, yeah, with that, that having Dan Walsh on this channel talking about SC Linux, talk about a your brain will be fried cool. just like he just oof. It'd be, it, that'd be great, that'd be really cool. Yeah, um, that would be cool. I should reach out to Dan and just be like, just come on and talk. Yeah, just come on and talk about <laughs> SC Linux. Just come about SC Linux, man. Um, and so, yeah, so here you notice the TFTP boot, Pixie Linux. I have a configuration for each a node in my cluster, and these are MAC addresses. Mm -hmm. So, depending on um, I don't even know what this is. So let's uh, let's just cap this. Set dash OVI. Okay, there we go. Cat. Um, and this is for the master, right? right? So this master here gets this configuration for this master. Um, I want to bet that the next one, what is zero zero three nine? That one is for the worker, right? So like they each get their own individual configuration files, right? Right. Um, cool. So when I boot, depending on its MAC address, it should grab the right configuration. So let's see if that's true. So let's go back to mm -hmm. this guy here. Um, I always like to, so it doesn't, since, since this is Kubernetes, it doesn't technically matter which order you bring them up in because Kubernetes is self-healing and it'll figure things right. out, right? It'll figure it out. Um, but, but I always like to boot and I, and I mentioned this in my, it bootstrap first masters and then workers. Yeah. Only because, I mean, yeah, it just makes the most sense, right? Like it makes know, sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, starting the worker notes first is just going to waste CPU resources. Yeah, right. Now. <laughs> exactly. Cause the, the workers are just going to sit there waiting for the bootstrap to finish whatever it's doing. Because the workers are waiting for the masters to be finished, and the masters are waiting for the bootstrap to. So it's you just might right. as well just yeah. boot it up in in how um, in what it expects, right? So um, mm -hmm. so let's go bootstrap first. So let's do this slowly. So let's go bootstrap, power on, no bootable device. I probably need to. Uh, oh, yeah. what you done did did failure. I love failure. Uh, boot Failure's options. Awesome. Let's start. Uh, oh yeah. Hmm. Uh, CPUs? No. 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 Uh, boot options. There we go. Enable boot menu. Let's do that. From the DHCP oh. file that has been configured, can we just pick it up? I'm not sure what you're asking there, Brown Silo. Can't we just oh, pick up like the IP address? I think that's the IP. yeah. That's the uh, that's that's the goal at least here. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> so let's go here. All right, now that I have the boot menu, I can. Um, oh, I don't have Pixie. What does iPixie work? Three. I see if my Pixie works. If it doesn't, then I'll I'll shut down and we'll see. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't look like it's gonna happen. But um, this goes to show you, I never do this with a GUI. But it, I think I did it like <laughs> I think I did it like the first three times. I'm like, I need to automate this, so I have a bunch of scripts. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So it did. It picked up. Um, oh, good. Yeah. So it picked up. So we'll see it here. Uh, hopefully, this is big enough for everyone to see. But if you see here, it picked up Bootstrap. If you if you notice the messages is like towards the middle. It nice. picked up. Um, I'm pointing at my screen, I like, guess, if you can see. But um, no, I totally see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so that means the DHCP. So it picked up the right IP address, and right. two, it picked up the right um, uh, Pixie parameters for this uh, particular um, node, right? So yep. I got all the details and needed based off the MAC address. Yeah. Off we go. So then Pretty off we nice. go, it's selling rail core OS. Perfect, yep. cool. So cool. now I can safely- I Fire think, up. Yeah, do the same thing here. I should. Yeah. I need to change the boot options. Yeah, that's let's, all. Let's, let's do that here. No, well, come on. Give me a break, just. Freaking! <laughs> just, just do work. it. Just do it. Yeah. So here, Bootstrap is is running, as you can see in this window. So I'll just close that. Nice. Um, we'll get Master One Two up and running. Mm -hmm. um, enable boot menu. I wonder what you have to change to just have that box checked. Yeah. Because that needs to be just an issue right now. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> right, like. <laughs> 
Uh, well, yeah. well, I mean, it's only an issue when you first install Red Hat CoreOS, right? And also, right. If, you're doing, if you're doing it from the CLI, it's a lot easier. True. Uh, as as I mean, said. No. Nah. Okay. So Fine, I haven't I'll had, let it slide. Yeah, I haven't <laughs> had an issue because I, I, I know how to You've do it. You've never done CLI. it this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've never done it this way, but, you know. <laughs> got it. Got it, got it. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking at the uh, the the failed win, and, I'm get, and it's not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Uh, oh. By the way, so yeah. Um. Oops. So here, this picked up the master. So it it just no. So like it's it just knows that this is a master just because based on the MAC address. So that's the reason why we had to um, copy the MAC address from the. We had to run that command to get the MAC address. So um, boot options enable boot. Escape three. There we go. And this one, same thing, good options. Cool. So um, this is very watching paint dry -y, but mm. there's there's things you can do, right? So uh, first and foremost, let's look at the doc here. It says that you can um, look at the status page. Right okay. for for HA proxy, right? So, right. Um, if we go first, let's test. Right, we did. Let me make this a little bigger. We did um, DNS mask. So let's just make sure DNS mask is working, right? Oh, so yeah. if I do NS lookup of right. uh, master one dot ocp four dot example dot com, it returns seven dot. So yeah, Perfect. so that okay. DNS mask is working. Um, so then let's, uh, if I do a helper, right, 7.77. Nice. And so we know that works. So then let's look at the HA proxy page here when it comes up. This guy's busy. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty busy box right now. Yeah, let's look at the activity. Mm. <laughs> let's see. I'll, I'll let this run in the background and we'll see what that yeah, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, uh... um, so let's go to uh, helper.ocp4.example.com. And then um, I'm running it on 9,000. By the way, um, this... Langdon, oh my God. I, I should um, post you know, a it, it, oh, it, So you have dated yourself as far as your DNS knowledge yeah. goes. Because you do use so well, well, yeah. If you if you want to if you want to get technical, right? I can do um like I can do dig helper. I can even do dig plus short, right? right. It just gives me the um I can do dig dash x of the IP address uh, yeah. plus short. I mean, oops. Uh -oh. uh, does it give me? Oh no, Long? I have to, um, no. no, no. I I know this is because. I have to tell it to go. Now Langdon is mock laughing at you and mocking at you because dot yeah. uh, seven dot seven seven, uh, you know, plus short. It gives me the reverse, right? Um, you know, twenty one. How, how deep do you want to go, Langdon? Yeah, Langdon, oh, yeah. make him stop, please. please. <laughs> <laughs> how deep do you want to go? Um, as I was as I was, as I was saying, I was actually gonna um, gonna tell everyone. Um, I the opened port nine thousand thing is in your guide crown silo yeah so it's in the um it's in the guide and also i i, I do want to call this out this is very insecure to have this open if you're doing this publicly yeah it, it, like having ha proxy wide open to the world yeah. not smart so, so yeah so <laughs> so if you're if you're going to run this like in a cloud or something like that please please disable 9000 right yeah um, like <laughs> the management interface being open to the yeah. internet is always yeah. a bad idea there's yeah. never a good reason for that yeah, yeah. So don't. don't <laughs> so for P, for for PLCs and for for testing, if you're gonna do this internally, this is fine. But um, please close this out. Um, yeah, like well, just, once so. at least isolate it to your network or something. Yeah, like, don't, yeah. or like don't, put firewall rules in. Yeah, something. don't yeah. let that get public at all ever because yeah, so, it'll um, just ruin you. <laughs> People will ruin your day. It'll ruin your whole day. day. So, I'll, so I'll call that out right now that this is this is an insecure thing to do. So yeah, um, but so here, you're doing it on your local network, so it is therefore secure ish. Yeah, secure ish reasons. So mm. um, Bootstrap is green, right? So you can keep this up. What I like to do as well. Um, is um, that page will all refresh too, right? Yes. Good. Yeah. yeah. 
it'll refresh. I can refresh it now by clicking this button, but um, yeah, it'll auto refresh. Uh, you can do the wait for install. That's kind of boring. Um, if you go, where's my CLI? There we go. Um, right. You can do SSH bootstrap. Um, and it gives you this little handy um, mm -hmm. journal CTL, right? And you can see what's going on, right? And um, what is it doing right now? Okay, machine so, configs. Yeah. yeah. So the so good news, bad news is that in the Bootstrap logs, it gives you all the information. Good news, right? Bad mm -hmm. news is that not all errors are actual errors. Of Even, course not. Yeah, <laughs> when it says error, some like. Like sometimes it's just really mean error. Yeah. It so like could just mean are, it's waiting for something. It's waiting for something. Yeah. Like yeah. error cannot read, you know, cannot load file. Well, yeah, the API is not up. So that yeah. makes sense. Right. Like, so um, th the way I like to think of Kubernetes um, in general is that it is, pardon my language, it's a shitload of YAML and a bunch of APIs, right? All the APIs talk to each other and it doesn't matter when they start. <laughs> and then you yeah, just programmatically exactly. you just programmatically make those APIs do what you want them to with YAML. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'll eventual be, consistency it, is it, eventually, yeah. The reconcile yeah. loop, the name is there, it'll re eventually reconcile it. Um so what's happening now is that um the bootstrap is setting up a temporary API on itself and then it spins up uh, uh, an etcd cluster, an etcd cluster of one, technically, on right. itself, right? Yeah. Um, and then it uses that in order to spin up the two masters, right? So the two masters are waiting, continuously pulling the bootstrap. Um, the bootstrap will then, um, uh, what do you call it? It'll uh, not expand. Um, uh, it'll, uh, I don't know, it, it, it'll, it what does not the thing where scale. It I don't know why I haven't. Oh, I couldn't say that word. Yes, it'll scale. It'll scale. Yeah, it does the thing where it plus ones. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. It, it'll do a thing where now there's more of them. Um, <laughs> so it'll scale. Uh, that was late in the day for us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Well, it's later one, for me, at least. Yeah. Yeah, later for you. It's it's only one p.m. for me. Um, it's <laughs> I, don't, I don't have an your excuse. excuse. <laughs> yeah, I don't have an excuse. Um, it'll um, it'll eventually. scale a scale etcd into the masters so once etcd is scaled into the masters it'll hand over Boom. the Man. responsibility to the masters and now the masters are the masters right so right now the bootstraps the master and it's setting up the masters as the master so it's essentially it's using kubernetes to install kubernetes is that what i like that's to go? that's i mean that's how it's done right like look at kind and many yeah yeah, yeah, and look, yeah, else, kind right? like and, yeah, they, yeah exactly it's same kind of thing. Same kind of concept. Use Kubernetes to install Kubernetes because mm -hmm. it just makes sense, right? The paradigm makes sense. Um, and so that's what this is doing now, right? And you can kind of hear, um, see has things like running not ready and then it turns out to be ready, right? Yeah. So you see things like that. Um, it, is, so, it is very verbose. It, it is, is intentionally very, yeah. verbose. Unfortunately, um, what is and what isn't an error is just... It just, it's just timing. It just yeah. It, it, <laughs> it's it, just, it just comes down to like tribal knowledge at some time. Right. You know? Like if if you've been sitting here waiting for an hour and nothing's happened, yeah. you've then got a there problem. might be an error. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like I mean, that's kind of the situation you're in right now. So it says um, here, this is the this is the good is news. Quay is here. up. <laughs> yeah. Good news is Quay is up. Yeah. Exactly. Because boot, <laughs> boot service complete. So what this says here is uh, when you see this, you're done. Boot, mm. boot, uh, bootstrap mm -hmm. is done on the on the master. So you don't. Um, yeah. So this is the when when you see this message, you know you're in good shape. Um, good. So uh, then you can run this right. Wait for Bootstrap. Um, and then so, that's we'll tell you. By the way, I'm still in the OCP4 directory, right, where all the fun right. stuff is. Mm -hmm. um, wait for Bootstrap complete. It'll tell you. It is now safe to remove the bootstrap resources. Sweet. Which you absolutely want to do, especially if you're running with such low resources as I am. Right. So all I do is I just shut it down, right? Yep. Uh, Goodbye. Hasta luego. Um, I keep it around just in case, but I haven't really needed yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, um, it, yeah, it's just disk at that point. Yeah, let's just look at... Ooh, look at that. Look at the ah. CPU. <laughs> 
Funnily enough, my memory is not that bad. Wow. My, CP, my CPU is crazy. Um, oh, I mean, it's APIs, right? Like it's doing all kinds yeah. of crazy stuff in the background. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't need much memory to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's doing. But look this. at your network, though. Like it was doing a ton of stuff. Yeah. Then and then brought stuff. down. <laughs> so that's here. Um, you see that the masters are up. Uh, bootstrap is down. Obviously, we don't need this bootstrap. Right. So yeah. this is something that I want the um, uh, the helper oops, helper note check to do. Um, I I'm gonna add an option to do this, but um, I actually like to go to HA proxy config It'll and pull remove. the bootstrap out just yeah, for everything's just, green. Yeah, like yeah. I I can even yeah just comment it comment it out. We don't we don't need the bootstrap anymore, so you can just right. add in system CTO uh, restart HA proxy. Right, and Boom, it can reload the brand new config page because we don't want to see red, we yeah, want we nothing want... but green. Sweet. So now the API server is up, so that's the, the Kubernetes API and the OpenShift API. Awesome. Um, the machine config server, so the machine config server is um, what um, configures Red Hat Core OS, right? So when mm. workers boot up, they check in with a machine config server, they receive their config. And then they apply their config, so that's what that what that is, right? Um, right now, I'm just waiting for the ingress, right, uh, for the router, right? Because I'm right. I'm also load balancing the router. I'm waiting for those to come up. So the next step here is um, to to get CSRs, right? So yeah. so first and foremost. So while while you're doing the cube config uh, exporting, uh, Cron Silo says rather than destroy the bootstrap. Without much effort, could you bring the bootstrap back as a worker? Um, yeah, we yeah, you can do that. Theory, yeah. There's nothing preventing yeah. you from doing that. You could. Yeah, what you what you do is you when you uh, you have to boot it up um, and provide it a uh, a worker the, ignition config file. Right, like you just got to provide the config, and then it should be off and running. But but you need the DNS. You need you, a DHCP got, config. You need yeah. You, know, you you've got all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, you can, yeah. Um, it's so yeah, like it, if it's if not on core OS, it's not. Yeah, there's yeah. there's a lot of reasons not to. That's probably why we don't. <laughs> yeah, know. well, and and also the um, unless you're on bare metal, just spin up a new VM. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'll, I'll right? Like the, the cost of spinning up a new VM should be pretty low. Yeah. So yeah. um, so cool. So we get uh, CSRs, right? If you do OC get nodes. You'll only see masters, right? And because there's a CSR pending, right? So there's you need to when the workers check in, they provide a certificate. Yep. And then the master, you need to tell the masters, yes, accept the certificate, right? You can right. do an all-in-one shot um, by just running this. Oh, fancy! X, yeah, this xargs, right? Whoa. I love um, me some xargs. And remember, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Approved. Remember there's, yeah. <laughs> and remember there's there's two there's two for each um for each uh worker right so if you do cbs csr or unless i got them all in that one approved so nope. it goes so, go. note, so notice is approved and then issued so when, once you get right. those then, then they're both like then just both because copy, like you know? it's it's very much a handshake kind of thing right like i i i am here I, yeah. I accept you, and now you're now you're I good. accept you accepting me, sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so there's the the second one. So there's two CSRs per worker. So there's four CSRs made to approve. So essentially, I need to run this twice. Mm -hmm. There it goes. Um, then if I do this, it should say no more. Yeah. So I OC get CSR. Um, so just to recap, I exported my cube config, right? So this is the cube of for the admin account. And then um, I got the CSRs, right? OC gets CSR. Mm -hmm. um, I saw that there were some pending, and so I approved them. And remember, there's two for each worker, so you may have to run. Twice. Yeah, you have to, may have to run multiple times, right? So um, I'll pause here, see if there's any questions. So there is, there is a very good question in chat right now. Thomas Johnston on uh, YouTube asks, would the benefits of a core OS helper node outweigh the cost of needing a helper node to bootstrap the helper node? So the problem with trying to get all this stuff working on CoreOS could be the fact that <laughs> CoreOS is so stripped down. Yeah, would, you, you could. I don't even know if you could install everything on so there with, what, what, without yeah. a bunch of extra work. Yeah. What? What actually? What I would like to see is, and I have no idea. I have to look at the Jira. 
I'll see if, if there's anything remotely close to this idea, but to run the bootstrap uh, node or bootstrap process in a container. Um, yeah, like because, that's because it's what I would ephemeral. like to see. If it's ephemeral, like if you're going to get rid of it anyway, right. it, it'd be nice just to run the container, have it bootstrap, and then right. you know, like, pod man I just have a pod man node done. And yeah. like you showed me that way to generate pod man uh, system D files. So that's like, oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So that's like, easy <laughs> yeah, it would just that's, start up and run and yeah, done <laughs> and off it's going. Right. Like, yeah, all that's built in. Right. So, right. Um, so yeah. Um, huh. Cool. So, um, so here it says, um, I'll, I'm going to do things kind of out of order. Um, one of the, one of the things that you need to do is I like to do at least is, uh, oh yeah, OC get CSR. So they're all good. So we did that. I do OC get CO. So what does CO mean? CO is for cluster operators. So, um, OpenShift four, like if you keep hearing operators, not only do we do do we love operators and we, we keep boasting about operators that even OpenShift itself manages itself using operators. So yeah. we're we're not only all in operators for like the development stuff and for like providing services, like we use it ourselves, right? Exactly. Um, and these are these operators are responsible for the install of OpenShift, right? So there's like the authentication piece. There is uh, you know DNS, the internal DNS, right? Uh, core DNS, uh, etcd image registry, the ingress, right? So even the router, it's using um, an operator for that. So um, what you're looking for here um, is for all of these just to say true. True, yeah. Like true they all integrated just need to false, green out, right? yeah. So, yeah. So, so essentially, you, we all want this to be green, right? So if we go back to the, um, where's, there we go. Uh, if we refresh this page. So in terms of the load balancer, everything's, working hunky dory. Yeah. Um, all masters are green. All work our workers are green. The workers are green because the routers are running on there. Yeah. Um, at this point, you probably want to close that 9,000 port. So I, I just can't stress that enough. Anyways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 9,000 port needs to die. Uh, huh. And so the resources, yeah. So this is, this looks like it's going to be okay. Um, and then, uh, so here, um, so the next part is the registry, right? So the registry um, is in a state that's unmanaged, meaning that uh, you won't be able to use the internal registry until you set it to the managed state. But once you set it to the managed state, it'll break because it's waiting for storage, right? So in mm -hmm. this in this scenario, um, we can do one of two things. We can do um, an empty dir, meaning that anytime you um, you use the registry. If the registry goes away and comes back, all your images are gone. That's just the nature of empty dir. Or we can try to use the NFS storage system. So I'm going to ask, what would be what would be cool? What would be cooler to show? What do you think? What, do you, what would you do? What would Chris do? What would Chris Short do in this situation? I would do the easiest thing possible, right? Like I would not muck around with NFS, to be honest with you. I mean, perfect. Yeah. So let's do that. So then we set this to the managed stage. And that is the wrong window. Everyone else wants you to do NFS, though, but whatever. Does do do, do you, buddy? It, it, there's like three requests for NFS now because I said that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. So. Use so, NFS. So let's do this. So, um, so helper note check NFS info. This gives you um, how to configure it, right? So, um. It tells you which command. So um, this is a lot to read, and I apologize, but please read this because there's like information. Um, Rockhound wants you to use Ceph. Anyways, Ceph, <laughs> nice. Um, if I knew Ceph, I'd, I could use Gluster because I'm I'm really good at Gluster. But I guess everyone's moving Ceph now. Um, so once you run NFS setup, it'll actually it'll it'll essentially install NFS for you. It'll install NFS for you. It'll um, set up the, the storage class for you. Um, it, it does all kinds of stuff for you. Um, it's opinionated. So mm. um, what what you get is what you get. But um, for what you get is a function NFS server to be able to use on OpenShift. So I guess it's not too bad. Um, so let's uh, run health for NFS. Uh, let's see here. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Um, 
I thought I exported. OC get. You did your export. I did get. Uh, oh, what am I looking for? Uh, user local. This is this is live, by the way. <laughs> really? Yes, this is a live, live stream. I am looking for. OC get project default. Okay, so OC get project. OC. Step one: install the rook operator. <laughs> We haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Because the cluster's not done installing. Um, oh, is it not? Yeah. Uh, so that, yeah. Well, that so, so I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna set it to empty dirt and then switch it to NFS. That's actually a more. Um, you're just. You're out I'm of just, control. I'm you're out, of, out control. of control. I'm out of control. I need to be reeled in. Um, and then empty dirt. Right, so you can just essentially copy pasta this. This is this is good stuff to copy pasta. Um, so I set the the image registry to managed. Okay. And then uh, the storage to empty dir, which we're going to change after. Mm -hmm. And then um, if so, by default, the internal registry isn't exposed. Um, so if you want it exposed, meaning if you want to use your registry as your enterprise registry, you can just uh, do this as well. So, which I'll, I'll just do whatever. Right. This is where we'll, we'll do it live. Um, do it live. So here. Um, so while we're waiting, OC gets CO. Yeah, it's still running. So we'll, we'll, we'll put this in a watch and we'll wait this to finish. Um, are there any questions here? Listen, let me look at this here. Um, if you're on a disconnected Bastion host and you mirrored the release from external machines laptop, do you just tar the container directory data and resync? Or is there a better way to disconnect it? So, um, for a disconnected install, there is um, the OC ADM command that you can do, right? So there's 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 a way to do it where you are um, mirroring mm -hmm. the Quay repo with your internal repo. That is um, that assumes that you have like a dual home network, meaning that your repo is connected to the internet and to the disconnected network. Right. Um, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is uh, in the OC command. You can actually mirror the repo and save it locally, like to a tar file, and then sneaker yeah. net that over. And then sneaker, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'd like to point out a problem with a goal that we have. Uh, we have a goal to hit a thousand users by the end of June, and we're at six sixty six. So someone needs to get us off that number. We need yes, like Maybe one person to get yeah, at least yeah. one person to get that get us off that number. Preferably. 344 of you would do it, but yeah. at least one. <laughs> yes, at least one. 344 <laughs> is is what we're looking for. Right. Um, so what uh, our goal is at the end of the at the uh, at the end of the month, right? At the end of the month, we want um, we want a thousand people by July 1st, right? July 1st. That's right. Uh, it's a lofty goal. I feel like you know because it is Twitch. It's a new platform. That's right. A lot of people in tech are like, wait, you're you're on Twitch now, and it's like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you know, 007 I would definitely do take, right? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. All sevens, lucky sevens. There you go. Lucky is our next sevens. goal. So yeah. Um, but yeah, no, we really appreciate everybody that does follow the channel. We would like more followers though, because we feel like uh this content is worth uh everybody's attention. So yeah. Oh, we want stickers. They want stickers and t shirts. And snacks. And snacks. Let's Dang. do it. Snacks. I mean, I got some snacks over here. Remember, um, I mean, my my actual like snack pantry is, is like right around the corner from here, which is dangerous. But I have very how many? Good how many? Remember when they used to pass out the open shipped um chocolate bars? Yeah, I've got one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> open shipped chocolate. Bar. We should <laughs> we should, we should redo those with the uh, yeah. See, they yeah, get the chocolate see? bar. Uh, I ate mine. I, I felt bad after I ate mine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but it's actually made right down the street from the the Red Hat headquarters, right? Like, oh, okay, I okay. used to so, eat chocolate from here when I lived in Raleigh. I go. went to this chocolate shop. So yeah, like it's it's a very much a made in Raleigh kind of thing, just like Red Hat. But you know, we're a global organization now. Yeah, yeah. yeah but everyone wants snag and swags, snacks. We're trying to figure out how to get yeah, snag, we're trying to, um, it's, swag it's, out. Not it's easier when you do out. these things. Um, when you do these things like in um, like in person, right? Like it's mm -hmm. you can yeah, like in person, I could give you a Kubernetes uh, chocolate bar. Yeah, or OpenShift hat, which I have up here somewhere, actually, right there. Um, 
Yeah. Here's um, uh, like we we can we can spend the time doing CO. There's other things I like to do. Uh, little little. Uh, CO yeah, like teach us some tricks, man. So if I do OC get pods, all name spaces, uh, no headers. Ooh, no headers. And I do e grep of run. Oops, e grep dash v. So I don't want to show you don't running. Want the running ones. You want the I don't not want the, running ones. And I don't want the completed ones either. Right? It's completed. Right. Because like it would it, there's a lot of jobs that are running right, and these will show you all the problem containers, which there's none. There's no problem none. containers. Okay. Okay. So What's then, we, so then let's go to OpenShift install, wait for install complete. Just okay. That, man. So this just waits for the API to come up on the six four four three port. Yeah. And once it's there, it's all happy. It's all and happy, yeah. It's ready for the next step, kind of. So OC get uh, CO. It's probably still waiting. Yeah, the API server is still uh, just like chugging. Package server, I'm sure. Progressing equals true. Pulling down a bunch of stuff. Yeah, let's look at the uh, let's look at the all fun. Would love to see how OCP will be managed by ACM. I have been trying to get uh, the ACM uh, technical marketing manager on here for yep. weeks. So <laughs> that'd be a great, that'd be a great, great Jimmy. Great if yeah. you're listening, Jimmy, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, we want you on ACM. We, we want you here like, talking about ACM. Yeah, that I everyone's actually, excited about ACM. I'm excited about ACM. You know what? I mean, I'm just gonna ping him right now and just be like, Jimmy, look. you're being like, Jimmy, you're being called out. Live. You're being asked for <laughs> live. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think he would appreciate that. And if I sent that to him, he might actually like, be like, okay, fine, because he's waiting for like a couple things to like progress. But you know, so that's, features as they are. Where's old Jimmy? Good old Jimmy. Good old Jimmy. Well, oh, I guess he's. Are... I guess he's in the CoreOS chat now. Let me find him in there. He. he... Cause... Yeah, I'm getting a crash. I'm getting a crash loop. Looks like on the. Uh oh. Uh -oh. On what? The cube API server, which is probably important. That's Let's really see. bad. Yeah. Unable to connect EOF. That's a crash loop. Uh, I may be running out of resources. Who knows? Knows DMs. Jimmy. Come on. Here we go. My, com my computer is running insanely slow. Where is the? I keep trying to find. I have too many windows open. There we go. Look at that. So let's look at this guy here. Let's go to uh, free. Um, not swapping too much. Mm. Uh, let's go to. You're not. Uh, wait. Oh, okay. Sorry. I misread that. Yeah. No, you're not. Command memory CB. CB. Oh, so, troubleshooting. Hell yeah. And then, well, I mean, 50% idle. That's actually not too bad. No, that's great. Load average of six. Wait, no. wait, wait, wait. Do you have hyper threading turned on or off? Hyperthreading is good question. I think it's on. Okay. It may or may not be on. I don't know. Because um, if it's fifty percent and you have hyperthreading off, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, maxed out. <laughs> yeah, max, I'm max. Yeah, exactly. Good question. Uh, I'm pretty sure you did. I remember seeing something about it. Hyperthreading. We'll see. Um, let's go back and see if it's. Sometimes it'll clear up. Yeah. So OC get CO. So degraded equals false. To all of them, that's what you want to see. False, 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 yeah. false, 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 false. Across the Available board, true, right. 433. So I'm feeling good about this. Let's go do a wait for. So wait for it, install complete. It's installed. So we have awesome. OpenShift installed. You got password. Got all password. All of that. Now let's do the NFS thing, right? People wanted NFS. Let's do NFS setup. It's pretty easy. Do that. Yep. It'll wait for you it'll actually wait see so um if i do nfs provisioner right i have that running if i do oc get uh, sc for storage class it's there um it's actually in export right that is actually that's that's where it's um the stuff's being stored so now let's go back to nfs info and I actually have, you can, this is, uh, so I, I made this really, really copy pasta. Um, mm -hmm. So once once you do NFS setup, just copy and paste um, the registry PVC. It's created, right? So OC get PVC. Um, it'll show you that, um, that it created a PVC here. And if you LL export, you see that that PVC 
mm. is there, right? So it does it for you. Um, and then just copy pasta. We want to remove empty dir. Yep. And then we want to patch it with the registry PVC. All right. I sent Jimmy a, a screenshot of the message <laughs> asking for it with an arrow pointing to cron silo specific message. And he says, let's schedule one. Now I have things I can show. We can walk through the install, the point, first cluster, etc. Awesome. Let's get in the calendar. I will send him the form right now. There you go, folks. Ask and you shall ask and you shall receive. So let's go. Um, so let's let's look at the let's look at the web console here. So let's go to. Um, it's better if maybe if I copy pasta this here. So let's. Uh, what's really cool here is I can do ssh helper ocp four dot example. Old.com because of DNS mask, right? Yes. Um, uh, so OBI. And then you do uh, wait. No, uh, open shift install. Oh, actually, I don't need to do that. I should just cat open shift install dot log. And it gives me uh, the last line. Yeah, so this guy here. You yep. copy that password. And I can actually just open link. And there we go. Cool. Hey. So let's let's go. Obviously, to... you did not put like let's encrypt or anything on here yet, or anything no. crazy. This is bear cluster cube admin. Bear cluster cube admin. How many pods are running in a bear cluster these days? It says here. Well, luckily, uh, thank well, uh, thank you. You asked for that because it's in the overview page. It tells you it's two hundred and seventeen pods. But uh, <laughs> that number will actually go down, I believe, over time. Um, I think it normalizes under 200 ish about about yeah because yeah. um because keep in mind every single like thing you see on the left hand side is a pod basically right <laughs> everything underneath those things is a pod yeah. right so the 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 dashboard is a pod the some specific the update function is a pod right like everything is a pod in kubernetes or in openshift because everything mm -hmm. is an operator yeah um the idea is it's self-healing, it is self-managing, and it is, you know, just running. Um, so, yeah. the And you can actually see the self, self-updating. self There's actually an update here. So right. You like, look, I mean, look we here, could go right? update our just-installed cluster right now. And I'm it takes that. about, I think, 20 minutes to go from 443 to 446. Yeah. So, they yeah. go to cluster settings. It's, uh, it should be updated. Come on, update. Up. Working towards four six six downloading updates. So yeah, yeah. So now like, it, it's automatically doing this. So like now I don't have to worry. It updates the version of Red Hat Core OS. It updates the version of OpenShift. All the operators. I'm golden here. So um, just to recap here, I have uh, I have the helper node running all the the fun stuff. Um, what happens if I Google helper node? Oh, it actually, the first one is actually my old helper node. And you should second, set that up to redirect. Yeah, well, what, what I'm doing, what I did, um, unfortunately, is I just put it like, but I'll, I'll, oh, I'll, well set, that up, works. I'll, I'll set up a redirect. Um, yeah. that's, that's probably better. Um, There's a way to do that. I've so there we go. I just wanted to get this graph up. Um, we have the helper node here, right? So my right. network's internal, my internal network. It, it's all laid you. out there, yeah. Um, so this is it, our current state. Yeah. So here, my laptop, yeah. I logged into the helper. Uh, bootstrap is down. We don't need the bootstrap anymore, but I have the three yeah. masters, yeah. the two workers, um, and the helper is doing everything. It's helping. It's helping. <laughs> Dude, it is, it's, it's it is very everything. helpful. Imagine yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but folks, I mean, there's, we pointed out a number of places where y'all could chip in, maybe help, maybe add a suggestion. So please open issues, open, you know, PRs, whatever you want. Yeah. Um, Oh, okay. So the <laughs> yeah. the the latest thing now in chat is uh, you're using a computer with 64 gigs of RAM. Can you do this on a computer with 32? I have tried it personally. I cannot. Uh, but I also have a lot of stuff going on. I was trying that on the streaming box. I was trying it between two boxes. It just wasn't working quite right for me. So we have code ready containers that should run on 32 gigs of RAM just fine. Uh, Andrew pointed that out in chat. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, but Rockhound mentioned CRC is nice, but unfortunately, when you're forced to use Windows, you need to use Hyper-V, which 
Yeah. Yeah. So. But yeah, Hyper, I mean, Hyper, it'll work on Hyper V. It'll work like on Hyper V. Yeah, the helper node will work on Hyper V, but um, yeah, this is agnostic. But um, so so yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, it's I just, mean, it's a platform, so it just requires um, yeah. a lot of resources. The, the yeah, it's the th so. Why do we have three masters? Three masters is for etcd aj, yeah. right? Like that's the big thing. Two workers, well that's pretty much you know the minimum right like unless you want to taint your masters to take workloads yep which you can also you can do that you can also technically run with one master yes um with the caveat mm. of you won't be able to upgrade yeah you'll never be able to upgrade you will never be able to upgrade <laughs> so that's just you know that's just, yeah. that's just one thing and two just knowing that you know I mean, for your local laptop, it should just be fine because that's what CRC is. It's just a master, one master, right? That's right. doing, doing you know, ah, workload. Right. Um, Andrew reminds me, two workers for HA router yeah. and Ingress. Yeah, my bad. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, so, yeah. So, it's just, you know, it's just the, the devil's in the details of etcd. It's just... Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Masters, yeah. Um, so, I'm 24% complete. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So... Um, but yeah, it just and you, and you can actually use the platform while it's upgrading. Oh, absolutely, um, yeah. The yeah. I mean, the, the the platform is like, see how it says there's thirty pods, right? You like can, it spins up can. more stuff and then spins it yeah. back down as things are upgraded, right? Like so, yeah, yeah exactly. It's, yeah. it's very usable during updating. We like we 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 want cluster admins to be able to administer the cluster without impacting workloads. So yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the goal here, right? Um, yeah, like if you need, uh, if you if you are running, if you're trying to run another copy of etcd, or you're trying to run like some of the the Prometheus operators, um, we highly recommend using three workers uh, because obviously, if you're running etcd as a you know side project or side uh, you know as its own service, it needs three as well. So. You know, three masters, two workers works, but three masters, three workers is what we typically recommend to folks. Oh, the control plane's happy. That was a fast hey, upgrade. That was a fast upgrade for the for the masters. Yeah, yeah. No it does kidding. the masters first? Um, yeah. So uh, yes, I like Landon's um, comment. He goes, "You can also, you can also, you can also run, run with scissors." scissors. scissors. Yes, so that yeah. is possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's possible, not recommended, right? Right, right, um, yeah. This, so keep in mind, right? Like it's Kubernetes, right? Like anything is possible. It's just what is supported is what we're trying to show you, right? Like yeah. we don't want you to steer too far off course. Yes, helper node isn't technically supported, but if you do it right, everything you install on the helper node is. Um, the or if you do it right, if you do it the right way to get support. Yeah, yeah. Like use, yeah, yeah, use yeah. rel and use rel. If packages. you use rel and you're using all the standard uh, packages, you should be just fine. Yeah. The uh, I think the the biggest thing here is that we've gone from nothing to a fully running HA cluster that is in the middle of an upgrade in the span of two hours. Yeah, two hours. Uh, it didn't, yeah, it didn't take two weeks. Over two, it took hours. two hours. Uh, yeah, it took two hours. It didn't going take from... two weeks. It took two hours. Yeah, two hours. Yeah. And and we were teaching from nothing. you along the way. So yeah, we're teaching you about that from nothing. Yeah, I, I could do this yeah, in an hour if I'm not showing from nothing. Anyone. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So yeah. if you're competent in this, this would take you very little time. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the idea that you're spinning up, you know, five or six boxes and you know blowing one away and then updating it and the whole nine yards and you're doing all that in an hour, I couldn't have done that five years ago. I mean, I couldn't have yeah. done that two years ago, maybe. Yeah. You know. <laughs> So yeah, the helper node is incredibly helpful, and it was, it was very important to me to get Christian on to show everybody this because it is going to make your life easier. Just tinkering with OpenShift, and that's what we want you to do. We want you to kick the tires and yeah, figure out the best the tires, ways to yeah. implement it. You can you can use uh, you know go try it out openshift.com free account. You can try OCP yeah. um, when OKD. Uh, comes you can actually use the helper node to run okd so okd4 okay is in beta i believe it's pretty it's close beta. to being stable yeah yep. uh so, last meeting i was know. at um and, and then uh, learn.openshift.com if you don't want to download anything you don't want to install anything you just want to learn some of the basics uh, and get a little deeper 
learn.openshift.com has tons of Katakoda exercises where you just do everything in the browser, right? Like it spins up instances for you behind the scenes and you have, you know, fully accessible, you know, OpenShift clusters right there and learn.openshift.com. So yeah, we also like, uh, we maintain demo.openshift.com yeah. demo. for Open all good. of our demos and everything else. Uh, and then don't forget about OpenShift TV where you can find links to this Twitch, YouTube, uh, our, you know, cal our, our calendar is right there. Subscribe to it. Hit the little plus sign next to the Google Calendar logo. I know that's not as intuitive as it should be, but <laughs> yeah. sorry. There, there we a, we at least have thing, yeah. a public calendar. <laughs> yeah. um, let's see. How is IPI going on vSphere? Is it really coming in 4.5? Yes. Crossed. So the, the answer is yeah, all, all signs look good. So um, yeah, all signs point is, to yes. All signs point to yes. Obviously, with um, just with release things, things can happen in the last minute. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's so a release. Subject to change. But, uh, but the the good. the nerd magic eight ball says when so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah exactly it says <laughs> it says yes so yeah it, it is you can actually so by the way it made it to the nightlies so if um yeah if you want if you go to um the try fast channel what's that is it the fast channel or can you it's get it on, yeah so if you go to um here I'll I'll show, I'll show people how to get yeah there. show so me if please you go, if you go to try .openshift.com, Oh, that's right. The nightly's in there. Yeah. 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 And then you'll get okay. this warning. I think about it. My privacy statement. Um, sure. Why not? Just yeah. Put, okay. You tr treat my browser like a cookie jar. Yeah. Um, and then, so up here it says instant access to a cluster. Create your own cluster. Go to um, uh, create your own cluster. Uh, deploying your data center. Right. Okay. And then, it'll take you to. So here you need to log in. Not as cube admin. But as, um, <laughs> I like how that's the first suggestion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you always log into Cubad in a lot of places, don't you? <laughs> I'm, I'm everything, right? <laughs> so this is this is the Red Hat SSO. You can uh, sign up for a free account. Go to developers. Yeah, you can go to developers.redhat.com and get a free account there. Yeah. Uh, so you just log access, in. Access. Yeah. All that fun stuff. Yeah. Log in with that guy. Uh, I don't want to say. Oh, I always get this weird. Um, it only happens. So, by the way, I don't know who's if anyone from from uh, from PM is watching. This always only happens to me because no one else can. Um, um, it won't happen to you as, as an end user. It only happens to me. No one else can emulate this. So, I, I think maybe it's a problem with my account. I'm not sure. Um, what are you having to do? I have to go to access.redhat.com, log in, and then close go to it. anything else. Close it and then go to try.openshift.com and then click the links. So create my own cluster, try my own. Interesting. And then, the, but by the way, this is just me. Like I've asked people to do it um, and they're like, oh, I don't have a problem. Andrew said, yeah. I don't have a problem. No, I don't um, have a problem. No one has a problem. I'm the only one. Something's wrong with it's my It's because you've been know. here forever. That's why. Yeah. Well, yeah, I have like when they start merging accounts from mm -hmm. old things, you know. Yeah. Stuff so you need, like I've, I'm still on a bunch of Ansible stuff because I was on the team. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> Merging of accounts sometimes just doesn't work. Um, click on, go ahead and click on vSphere, and then there is a. You'll see this little developer preview. Ooh. Download pre-release builds. Right. Okay. Uh, these are the nightlies, right? So these are. Um, uh, this is uh, version 4.5, with uh, Cube uh, 1.18, and this has. Vsphere IPI. So um, when you download the installer, uh, where is it here? Download installer. That yep. installer will have the bits for um, Vsphere IPI. If, Andrew, if you're on, can you paste the, um, the GitHub page? I don't know where it is. Andrew has like access to the the instructions on how to do IPI. Oh, on how to do so, the IPI yeah. nightlies thingy. Well, he has the instructions, like like the prerequisites, because there's like some DNS prerequisites that you need. Uh, but um, okay. Anyways, so. Andrew is on. He's probably yeah. looking for the page. He's probably uh, he just page. linked to his stream from last week. So yeah. Okay. So, last. Well, we have to wait for the thirty second. Um, yeah. <laughs> delay. Get there yeah. Look right. but, you know, I mean, we have Slack. We could just there it, yeah. there it is. There it is. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, we just we just need to, um, and that's the instruction. So now you have the bits. Now you have the instructions. Uh, go nuts. Oh, even oh, Huddle sounded nice. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah, so yes, so okay, it, cool. it is on the roadmap. Um, and we have more than 666 followers. Thank you very much. Uh, any other questions? Is there any other questions here before yeah, we wrap up? I'm, I'm scrolling through here, see if we missed anything. I don't. Uh, can we get the helper node for backup somehow? Helper node for backup. So um, who, who wrote that? Um, Rockhound. Yeah, so Rockhound, what do you mean by helper node for backups? backups? Do you mean backup the helper node? Do you mean backup OpenShift? Do you mean backup? API the applications bigs. on it yeah like what are you wanting to back up like do you want because it's a different answer depending on what you're looking right because <laughs> it's a different answer. so um so yeah. there's you know so there's there's a few things for backup right for like applications there's not really much different than what you would do now for your application backups um there is mm -hmm. the cam tool that can be um used for um uh for backup right it's, oh, it's not, it, yeah, could you migration. use it as a, yeah, could you use it as a thing to back up CD or something like that? Yeah, yeah I well, guess, yeah, I, I mean. I guess, yeah, so. Um, um, there's better ways. There's better ways, like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, there are better ways to back up things like etcd and, you know. Because you can do etcd, snap, etcd snapshots, right? Yeah. Save those snapshots. You're going to have to take those at a pretty regular interval because there's a lot of changes going on, but. It constant changes pretty much. Yeah, constant and, changes. Yeah. So it's you need to, but you can um, etcd snap the etcd database. Uh, do snapshots of the virtual machines. You can do that. Um, yeah, but even then, right? Like you may have to rebuild some. Like if it's you, a master. You yeah, probably, like I couldn't imagine like a master with workloads. Okay, all of a sudden I'm going to image this, and then turn it back on you know, days later, potentially, and it just work. I'm not sure. Well, how if it would go. etcd would, um, a new master would get elected, right? And then it right. would just catch up the old master. Right. So if, if you're but, talking about like snapshot. But it, would it even be a master at that point? No, it would just add itself as another node, right? Well, no, it'll it'll be a master. It'll just, it'll just for, for etcd, it won't be like an etcd master, right? It'll just be a, a regular worker, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, enrich the helper node with GitLab container as a repo. Yeah, well, I mean that. GitLab. I mean, you could pull down the Quay images too, technically, right? On the helper. Yeah, there was. Um, there's if a, you there's wanted a to go things. in between that, but. Eh. Yeah. So just um, well, one contributing the contributing docs easy. Um, use Ansible two point nine, yep. and PR against Devel. Yep. Um, some of the things I've been wanting to do is uh, make the helper node HA. Yeah, um, that's so. What is the importance uh, behind making it HA? Right. Um, like, yeah. what is on so, the helper node that needs to be HA? So right now, um, the helper node, as us, so like you can just take a quick look at this diagram, and you can mm -hmm. already see that it's a single point of failure, right? Yep. Exactly. Helper node, right? helper like node only, goes down. Yeah. No, there's no DNS backup. There's no load balancer yeah, backup. Load backup yeah. So yeah, it's, putting keep alive D in front of all of these services would make a ton of sense. Would make a lot of so for really DNS and load balancer is mm -hmm. probably and I guess the HTTP if you want to bring up other I would uh, say the web server too. Yeah, web server too. Well, I mean if if you're you know if you're using keep alive D, might as well just put everything there. Right. But really it's the DNS and the load balancer is that is that's paramount to the functionality. Yeah, yeah that's really yeah. That, that's so I'm going to put that, that's like the top, but obviously if I'm doing it, I'm just going to do everything, but um, mm -hmm. that's the top of the list there. Uh, other things I want to do is, um, uh, there's just some, some enhancements I want to do, like um, being able to specify where you want to install right at CoreOS. Um, I mean, there's there's all kinds of room a, for documentation, a, right? Like, yeah, at a at a container registry, right? So, I, like, if add a registry to the helper node, I, there's like right. an RFE for that. So, if you guys, Andrew's trolling you in chat, by the way. Being used for more than a lab, thinking face emoji. A AHA for helper node service implies it being used for more than a lab. Correct. Mm, yeah, <laughs> but... it does. It, it does imply but that, but yeah. if you're spending, <laughs> it, yeah, but I, mean, I don't know if I use it, it for production, to be honest with you. But if it were HA, it technically can be used for production. Yeah, nothing stopping people from using it in production. Yeah, the only reason you're saying not use it in production is because it's not supported. I feel like because it's not supported, correct? Right. I mean, <laughs> that's that's 
in theory, there's nothing stopping you from doing this in prod, right? There's nothing Correct, stopping yeah. you from, you know, running with scissors in prod too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Said. So <laughs> use caution, but you know, it's, it's here, it's here to help you. And if you feel like you can uh, use it in prod, go ahead, but please yeah. read the playbooks, please read everything before you just yeah, just yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, don't 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 just tr yeah. It's, it's like kind of curl bash, right? Like, yeah, don't curl bash it. Please. Don't curl. Don't curl bash it. Meaning, like, know what it's doing. Obviously, just don't. Right, don't, like, don't just blindly. I've um, already I've already looked at one file and said, okay, I need to think about this a little bit deeper. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, that port nine thousand thing. Like, if I didn't call it out, not not everyone would know. No, right? no, no, not everyone would even <laughs> notice that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like the, the GitLab thing, yeah, feel free to, um, yeah, if you want to PR that in, shards, yeah, PR that in, um, you know, the more, the merrier, I, right. I say, like, like I said, if like, if you want to add artifactory, go ahead. I mean, I have 13 but, contributors. So like, I always, you know, yeah. obviously I'm the top guy, but like these guys here, these are the IBM, you know what you need, IBM you know, what you, you know what you need now. You need a sticker. You need a sticker. You need a I've logo. Been, thinking, you need a logo I, and a sticker. I've been thinking about. I actually asked some people, like, what should the helper node logo be? I was thinking maybe a server with a with a Superman costume. I don't know. Um, that that that's another that's another suggestion I'm willing to to accept there. So, um, uh, I think that's probably a Langdon question. To be honest with you, Langdon, Langdon, like know. Langdon would probably come up with a great answer. Uh, artist, I can find you. I could cool. probably there we find go. an artist. And then we'll if make, you come we'll up make with a concept, easier. we could probably find an artist. All right, there we go. So that's that's the uh, that's the takeaway, right? Um, Open shift with the Red Cross, sir. In the middle, yeah. <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> yeah, like, like actually it, not bad. Yeah, yeah. Like we have a Red Cross red hat icon and everything, right? Yeah, like, like it would work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's like like it's the Red Cross, right? Like it's supposed to help yeah. you, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or like an ambulance, uh, an ambulance I can make logo that. or something like that. Yeah. yeah, I can make that. Put that red, put the red hat logo on an ambulance with a plus yeah. sign on it. Yeah, I was thinking like, <laughs> well, I, I was thinking like, like a server with a cape and like an H on it, like, like it's Superman. But I don't know. We'll see. Or uh, we'll, Langdon, we'll see. we need a concept art for a sticker slash logo for Helper Node. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that would be a TM violation. We'll see. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, whatever. Yeah. Yes. So I think we're done here, Christian. Thank cool. you very much. This was very yes, cool. Yes. I can now, I can now feel like I can use helper node confidently. There you go. Uh, yeah. yeah. No capes. Um, no capes. <laughs> <laughs> no capes. Uh, no capes. <laughs> if, you're, right. if you've ever watched The Incredibles. Yeah. So, um, no, Langdon, I have an artist and uh, we need concepts. Like what, what would make a good idea for a logo kind of deal? We, sh we can hash it out chat later but yeah yeah thank you all so much for joining i hope this was educational for you yep tomorrow come back open shift commons uh what is it about it is about cloud native data protection for kubernetes so if you're <laughs> wanting to back up stuff um and then very special thing on thursday uh how's my flat name.ca is an effort <laughs> uh in canada right now uh, and they're using OpenShift to do COVID-19 case studies. So uh, I think Diane wanted to show that off. And then Friday, we will have somebody from the Global Transformation Office. I believe it is Kevin Baer, who was one of the authors of the Phoenix Project. So yeah, stick around. Oh, cool. Check cool out the calendar. Coming. Yeah, we've yeah. got some cool stuff coming. Uh, I, I've, I've been doing a lot of show running the past couple of weeks, so I've got some stuff on the hopper too. Uh, Jimmy just said he filled out the uh, stream form, so there's a there's there's an ACM show in the works now. So yeah, we're doing great. So thank you very much, everybody, for coming on, making yeah. your suggestions, helping thank out you, all nine yards. Cool, Christian. Thank you have a great yeah. rest of your day, buddy. Yeah, you too. All right, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>